And there are quickly two down here in the bottom of the third. So put out 6-3, and that brings up Husky, Husky third baseman, third baseman Jacob, Jacob Lamb. Lamb. Lamb, one for one. He singled a ground ball base hit into right past a diving Rodriguez. Back in the first. Two down, nobody on for the dogs here in the third. Gavilio winds, kicks, and deals, and that one is a slider again. In and over for strike one. Fairly alarming that he would walk seven in a game, considering he's only walked 20 on the year in 87 and a third. That ball game you alluded to against UCLA, Gary. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and that's a slider down low. The count evens at a ball and a strike. He does it with control. He's not a real overpowering guy. High 80s fastball can touch the 90s, but a good slider, good change, a good curve that he mixes in as well, but relies on his command control. Here's the 1-1. Has swung on and missed, took something off that one. And a big cut by Lamb, and the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Troy Scott on deck if Lamb keeps it alive with two down here in the third. A one ball, two strike count. Gavilio ready to go. Long series of signals, too long for Lamb, who calls time. Bit of a shift on as the shortstop done almost behind the bag at second. And the second baseman, Rodriguez, out on the outfield grass in short right. Here's the one, two. And that one's gone the other way in the left field for a base hit. This piece of hitting by Jacob Lamb, who just kind of dumps it into left on the outer half of the plate. And he's got himself a couple of hits in his first two at-bats this afternoon. Five hits for the Huskies, all singles so far. They haven't been able to cash in on any yet. First baseman, Troy Scott. Troy Scott, the hitter. Scott 0 for 1, grounded out to second. 4 to nothing, Oregon State here in the bottom of the third. Huskies trying to rally with two down. And Scott again will stand in from the right side. Oregon State was able to do it with two down in the first inning. We'll see if the Huskies can answer with two down here in the third. Scott grounded to the right side last time up in the first. Pitch on the way to Troy and a breaking ball right there at the knees. Strike one. It's been a good pitch for Gavilio so far in his early outing here just in the bottom of the third. But as Gary mentioned, five hits in two and two thirds are all singles for the Huskies. Here's the stretch and the pitch on the way, and that one drifting outside. The count evens, one ball, one strike. Wind again starting to pick up, blowing toward center, out toward left center. High clouds drifting through the area. They're expecting rain to get into the area tomorrow. That's what got this double header on the schedule today. Turn in a throw to first and back to the bag easily as Lamb. Lamb does have a couple of swipes, two for two. Here's the 1-1, one, one, another turn and a throw to first. And Oregon State thinking with two outs. The Huskies may try and put it in motion to get a runner in scoring position. Scott ready to go at the dish. Gavilio from the mound. Here's the stretch by the right-hander and the pitch on the way. Chopped foul behind the plate. And the count moves to a ball and two strikes on Husky cleanup hitter Troy Scott. Scott, the senior out of Auburn, former Auburn Trojan. Eric Peterson, the designated hitter on deck. If Scott keeps it alive with two down here in the bottom of the third. Cavilio from the belt delivers one, two. Chopped foul outside the back. Wow, Jordan Tuig tried to barehand a shot off one hop and he knocked it down but he's going to have a bruised palm as his end prize for that play I don't think that was a good idea that was hit pretty hard well, at least coach knocked it down on the first base side and foul ground. Here's the one-two on the way and that's way high and away. Well, that's what you teach your infielders. Knock you it down. Knock it down. You gotta lead by example, right? Right. <laughs> of course, the infielders have a glove. Yeah, that usually helps. That's the difference. 
Two balls, two strikes. Two down here in the bottom of the third. One on for the Huskies. Troy Scott, left-handed hitting cleanup man, ready to go. Here's a stretch by the Beavers' Gavilio, and the pitch on the way, and that's laced into left center on the ground. Rounding second and motoring into third is Lamb, and the Huskies have runners on the corners. That ball hit just to the left of the shortstop, Dunn, and trickled into left center field. That is the sixth hit, all singles for the Huskies. So the dogs now with runners on the corners, two down, and that brings up Eric Peterson, the designated hitter. Eric Peterson. Peterson has one of those six singles, a ground ball up the middle back in the second. He's one for one. In your face scouting report, because Scott hit it right at the six hole. The shortstop, though, shaded over towards the bag at second base, expecting Scott to pull. He goes the other way and gets a base hit, and the Huskies in business with runners at the corners. Another single for the dogs. Here's a pitch to Peterson. That's outside. A snap throw down to third, but diving back to the bag in plenty of time is Lamb. And now looks like a visit to the mound. Oregon State to send Nate Yeske, the pitching coach, out to go talk to DeGavilio. A reminder, fans, a play-by-play brought to you in part by the Seattle Auto Service Center, your complete auto repair and service specialists by Roundtable Pizza. Ask about their limited number of Husky glasses available for free in Overlake, Woodenville, and Issaquah by Quorum Laurelhurst, serving Seattle's finest neighborhoods, and by Artesian Hardwood Floors. We work hard to earn your reputation. The Husky... Oregon State doubleheader game one of two that you'll hear on the air today on AM 1150 KKNW. Home plate umpire Kenneth Durham out to break up the meeting, but this seems to be an extended chant. Now we'll get everyone back to their post and restore play. Beavers with four in the top of the first, and that's the spread by which they lead. Four to nothing Oregon State, but the Huskies have runners on the corners with two down. Here in the bottom of the third. Remember it was last night in the third inning. Peterson came up with the bases loaded. And couldn't get it done. Goes down. Here's fourth inning. The 1-0 on the way. And that one is a slider in and over. Strike one called. One ball and one strike. Huskies at the time had a two-run lead. Four to two in the fourth. And he came up with the bases loaded. Looking to do more damage. He was struck out. That ended the Husky threat, and then Oregon State would immediately take the lead back and have it for good. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss. Bottom dropped out of that one. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. In addition to good control, Gavilo has good movement on his pitches. Fastball can move. That changeup drops down. Of course, he has good movement on that slider and that sort of secondary slower breaking pitch. Here comes the one two. Swing and a miss. So the Huskies threatened with a couple of two out singles, but they leave runners on the corners here in the third. And as we go to the fourth, it's still the Beavers four and the Huskies nothing. To make it in this league, you need to give 100%, 100% of the time. Why would you expect anything less from your auto mechanic? The professionals at Seattle Auto Service Center are the area's leading automotive professionals. They feature ASE certified technicians, trained and certified to perform diagnosis, repair and service on all systems of your automobile, truck and SUV. For all your auto repair and maintenance needs, visit them at 6718 Roosevelt Way Northeast or find out more at seattleautoservicecenter.com. Installing, refinishing, or restoring your hardwood floors? Artisan Hardwood Floors provides the highest quality craftsmanship at the most affordable price. For generations, we've been working hard to earn your trust and exceed your expectations. We're experts in all types of hardwood services and specialize in Swedish finish with a wide range of color and top finishes. Whether it's installation, sanding, refinishing, restoration, or stair work, call 206-933-1703 or 425-644-9639 or go to artisanhardwoodfloors.com. We go to the top of the fourth. It's game one of two to be played here at Husky Ballpark. Today, double header between the Huskies and the Beavers. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill, four to nothing, Oregon State as we go to the top of the fourth. Putting off the fourth for Oregon State. Third baseman Carter Bell. It'll be seven, eight, nine due up in the Beaver order. Carter Bell, the third baseman, followed by right fielder Jared Norris. And second baseman Jake Rodriguez. 
as Jeff Brigham, who had a disastrous start to his outing today, has settled down and has thrown a couple of scoreless since. First pitch is lined foul out of play down the right field line. Brigham allowed four runs on a walk, a couple of doubles, and a couple of home runs in the first, but held the Beavers off the board in the second and third and is out for his fourth inning of work here. Here comes the 0-1 to Bell. That's a breaking ball low and away, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. Oregon State atop the conference, 15-4. and four. Their overall record, 36-11, and 11, and they are ranked number two in the nation. Here's the pitch, and that one misses for ball two. Two balls and one strike to count. Good crowd here this afternoon to watch doubleheader action. A lot of little leaguers in attendance, plenty of orange and black clad fans here who made a weekend out of it going up and attending the Safeco field game last night. Here's the 2 1 swing and a miss. Ball coming in on him. Well, that's what happens. You know, number two in the nation. They've had so much recent success. The following has certainly been there. I mean, two national championships, two Pac 10 championships, all Americans. Here's a 2-2 to Bell. Swinging a ball, chopped outside the bag at first. Foul collected behind the bag in foul territory. They've really done a great job down there at Goss Stadium. That is a fantastic place to watch baseball. Yes, it is. Great atmosphere. They get a really good crowd. The stadium's fantastic. 2-2 two two the count. Bell is one for one. He had a double back in the first. Part of that four-run inning, he did not come around to score. Here's Brigham's wine and the 2-2 on the way. Slider low and away, ball three, and it's gone full on Bell. Three balls, two strikes. What Oregon State has really done is they've given a lot of cold-weather schools hope. You know, the national championship really dominated by schools in the south. I'm talking, you know, California and also the south-south but warm weather places. Well, Oregon State has changed that. Here's a 3-2, and that's lined out to after it's short. One down. Bell hit it on the screws, but right where after the shortstop was standing, and the Husky shortstop makes the play one down here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, it's really interesting with Brigham Mark on the mound. This is his fifth start of the season, but first Pac-10 start. This late in the season, we're seeing back-to-back -back starters for the Huskies making their very first Pac-10 starts. Last night it was Tyler Kane. Here it's Jeff Brigham. Here's Jared Norris, the right fielder. Pitch on the way. Skied to center and shallow. Gardner Young coming in. He's underneath it, waits for it to fall and makes the catch. So two down here in the top of the fourth, a line out and a fly out. Second baseman. And that brings up the ninth Jake hitter in the Rodriguez. Oregon State order, second baseman Jake Rodriguez. And again, he has put down the first two in every single inning so far. It's just with two outs, the first inning, walk, double, home run, home run, double. You take that away, he's been pretty good in this game. Four to nothing Beavers here. In the top of the fourth, two out, nobody on. Rodriguez, the ninth hitter, 0 for 1 with a pop-up. Pitch on the way is a slider down and away. Rodriguez showed bunt but took the bat back for ball one. Nice day today. We've had the wind coming in and out. Now just kind of fluttering the flags. They won't be inactive for long on a breezy afternoon. But, boy, good decision made by the two coaches to see if they could squeeze two games in today with the weather supposed to come into the area in the form of rain and lots of it by tomorrow. Hey, well, the Suns out play as much baseball as possible. Especially this spring. Yeah. It has been rare here at Husky Ballpark to see sun during a game. Here's the 1-0 on the way, and that's inside. Almost got a piece of them. So the count goes to 2-0 on the ninth hitter, Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez, a 3.06 average. He is 15 of 49 on the year coming in, now 15 of 50 with his pop-up in the first, or the second rather. And this one on the way is inside, and they got a piece of him. He's barely skimmed him, but it got away enough from Brigham to where with two outs, the base runner on via the hit batter. Michael Miller. Now, outside of the second, when he got Oregon State in order, 
three of his first four innings, he's allowed that runner with two down. He had a two-out yeah. walk in the third, a two-out hit batter here. And, of course, we all know what happened with what started as seemingly a harmless two-out walk in the first. Now it's the top of the order, and here's Michael Miller, the center fielder. Yeah, that's the other side of the coin that I was talking about. He's been able to get the first two hitters, but the third has been tough. Turn in a throw to first, and Rodriguez diving back to the bag. Came in with kind of ugly Pac-10 numbers in seven games at 10.50 ERA, but let's put a couple of zeros on the board the last couple of innings. Here's a stretch by Brigham, and the pitch on the way, and that's a slider at the knees. Strike one to Miller. There is activity in the Husky bullpen. Right-hander Aaron West warming up for the dogs. We are in the top of the fourth, four to nothing, Oregon State. Beavers with two out, one on. Rodriguez, who was skimmed by a Brigham pitch, the hit Batman batter on at first. It's Batsman. This one's lifted foul territory outside the bag at third. Lamb will give it a run, and he will have a play on it. That wind blew it back in, and he makes the catch in front of the Oregon State dugout. No runs, no hits, one left on. No errors as we go to the bottom of the four. Three and a half of the books. It's still the Beavers' four. The Huskies nothing. Lewis, I was surfing the web, comparing other airlines' rates to Horizon Air and Alaska Airlines. Really, Clark, and you're the one who always said... I know, it's not about the money, I know. You always said that Alaska and Horizon are our airlines from right here in the Northwest, and we take care of our own. I realize that, Lewis, but I got Clark, you always said that the three C's matter most. Convenience, comfort, and quality. I know. I'm just trying to say that the prices at AlaskaAir.com are really low. But you're right, it's not about the money. On the Clark and Lewis expedition, it wasn't about making $40 a month. $40? I was paid $30 a month. And worth every penny. But... You were like a Horizon or Alaska fare at AlaskaAir.com. A tremendous value that America couldn't find anywhere else. Yeah, but... But I... it's not about the money, I know. Yeah, but I... Look! Refills! Ooh... Buy the low fares and great deals on cars, hotels, vacation packages, and more. All in one easy place at AlaskaAir.com. Bottom of the fourth at Husky Ballpark. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill. It's the first of two between the Huskies and the Beavers. BK Santee. Oregon State in front four to nothing. And it'll be Husky catcher BK Santee to lead things off here in the bottom of the fourth. Santee will be followed by right fielder Brian Wolf and shortstop Troy Affner. Six, seven, and eight to up in the Husky order against Sam Gavilio right now. Despite allowing six hits, all of them singles, has himself what looks to be a pretty comfortable four to nothing lead. Here's the wind in the first pitch on the way to Santee, and it's a slider in and over for strike one. Right. Huskies have stranded four runners. They've had their chances. Here's the right-hander, 0-1, and that's again another slider on the outside corner this time. Strike two. Gavilio 9-1 and one with an ERA of 1.85 this year. Here's the wind in the 0-2. That's a fastball low and away. Not a bad pitch and no balls, two strikes. Goes to one and two. Santee, 0 for 1, grounded into a 6-4-3 double play back in the second. Of course, had that home run in last night's game at Safeco Field. Here's the wind and the 1-2. Check swing, slider in the dirt. Appeal made, he did not go, and the count evens at 2-2. and What a thrill that must be. That was his first home run of the season, and he hits it out of Safeco Field to, of all places, left field. It's really remarkable. Two and two the count. Here's the wind and the pitch on the way. And that's chopped out to short on a couple of big hops. Oh, booted by the shortstop done, and that will be an error. And safe at first is Santee. Routine ground ball, but Dunn drops it. And the Huskies have a leadoff man. Off the error by the shortstop, Dunn. See if Washington can kind of creep back into a 4 nothing deficit with a play like that to start the inning. They certainly get a break. Runner on with nobody down. We'll see if they can take advantage of it. 
Here's Brian Wolf, the Husky right fielder. The stretch and the pitch on the way. Check swing taken low. Ball one. Wolf is one for one. He's got one of the six singles on the day for the Huskies. But the Beaver four hits that all came in the first, a couple of doubles and a couple of home runs, and they lead it 4 nothing. The 1-0 is a breaking ball down low. Two balls, no strikes to Wolf. Coming into the game was hitting 206, 13 of 63. Santi, who reached on air, leading off the bag at first. Here in the bottom of the fourth with the Huskies trailing it 4 to nothing. Here comes the 2-0, and that one is low, ball three. 3-0 three the count. Husky shortstop Ty Afner in the on-deck circle. Dogs need some base runners, and as Gary mentioned, they've had a handful of base runners. Just have not been able to string some hits together. Here's the 3-0 taking all the way as Wolf and taking a strike on the inside corner. So the count moves to 3-1. and one. Now Sun warming the field here, kind of darting in and out of the clouds recently. Wind picking up a little bit toward left center, toward center. Three and one the count. Here's the pitch on the way. Chopped foul at the plate. The count goes full at three and two. Huskies 13 and 31 overall, 4 and 15 in the Pac-10. The stretch and the payoff pitch on the way, taken upstairs. I had that as ball four. There we go. All right. Uh, did Wolf forget? I think he just wanted to keep hitting. He just so stood there, kept waiting and waiting, and uh, I think the umpire said, that's four, son. You can head down to first now. And he tosses the bat aside says, oh, yeah, all right. I'll take my base. The Huskies with two on. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth with a chance to rally down four to nothing. Santi reached on the air by the shortstop Dunn and Wolf. A full count walk. So here's Ty Afner. Afner is one for one on a bunt single that was about as beautiful as a bunt as you'll ever see. Here's the pitch on the way to Afner, and that's ripped into center field for a base hit. They're going to try and wave in Santi, rounding third. Nope, they're going to stop him at the very last minute, and I think the wise decision to do so. Everyone moves up 90 feet. Dave Nakama at first, waving him around, saw that throw come in, was about two-thirds of the way down the line with a double hands up for a chance to stop his runner. And I think in a 4 nothing game, the last thing you can afford is to be thrown out of the plate, well, especially with nobody out. I mean, that would just be a killer to start the inning with, a, with one out. Now you have a situation where the bases are loaded and there's nobody down. So I think it was smart to hold Santi there, who did a little spin out, went into a slide, and scrambled back to the base at third. Here's Reggie Jones, the ninth hitter in the Husky order. First pitch slider down and away, ball one. Base is loaded for the Huskies. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. That is already the seventh hit of the afternoon on the after single to center. Big juncture here with Jones, who stands in 0-for-1 with a pop-up. Here's the stretch, and the 1-0 pitch on the way, and that's a fastball on the outside corner, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. Santi at third. Wolf at second. Afner down at first. And the right-handed hitting ready, Reggie Jones ready to go at a ball and a strike. Cavilio. We'll have time called on him. Is Jones ready to go? Stepping back in, getting a toe hold, and here we are. The stretch. The pitch on the way, and that one's right there at the knees. Strike two called. A ball and two strikes. Wind uh, starting to pip up again, blowing out to left. Here's the stretch. Gavilio peers in, kicks and deals, and that's outside ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Outfield is back, infield back, with the exception of 
the first baseman Hayes playing in front of the runner. Runners take their lead. Santee from third, Wolf from second, after from first. Jones looking for his first RBI of the season. Doesn't have one yet. This would be a pretty good time for it. Base hit could drive in a couple. Three of 28 on the year, the stretch. Gavilio with the 2-2 pitch on the way, and it is a slider up to center. Diving stop by Dunn, second to one relay. The first is in time to get the runner up the line. A beautiful double play turned in by Dunn and Rodriguez up the middle, but coming in to score is Santee. At least the Huskies get one, but that could have been easily a single up the middle and the aforementioned run batted in. Instead, it's a ground ball double play, but the dogs do get on the board. It's now four to one, and Wolf is down at third with two down. Diving wow. play by Dunn, atoning for his error earlier on in this inning. First pitch is down in the dirt, and Susak will have to look around and locate it before throwing it back out to the mound to Gavilio. It'll be the top of the Husky order. Brendan Gardner-Young, that looked like it would get through into center until Dunn ranges to his left, dives, comes up with it, flips it to Rodriguez, who makes a quick turn to barely get Jones at first base for a 6-4-3 double play. Again, on the play, Santi scoring and Wolf moving down to third. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Gardner-Young, and that's down low for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. So the Huskies on the board, albeit a ground ball double play. 4-1 to one now, and they've got... The second run potentially just 90 feet away in the form of Brian Wolf. Here's the stretch and actually the wind in the 2-0 pitch with a runner on third and two down. They're going to go back to the windup, and that's up and in for ball three. So Gardner Young ahead 3-0 and and will be taking all the way with Husky left fielder Joe Meggs on deck. Uh, that was a sensational double play. It looked like off the bat it would have been a base hit into center field scoring at least two. Instead it turns into a DP. Here's the 3-0, and that's at the letters for strike one. It was fitting, I guess. It was Dunn who made the play. Of course, he's the one that started the inning with the routine ground ball error. He more than made up for it on that play. Here's the wind at the 3-1 pitch on the way, and that's hit foul back to our left. That will be an unearned run. It was the error that ended up coming in to score. B.K. Santi. And as Gary mentioned, Dunn atoning for that error earlier on with a marvelous stop. And then the presence of mind to scoop it up. Let's not forget Rodriguez with his turn. This one's chopped to the right side behind the bag at first. It'll be Hayes to go to the bag and underhand to a covering Gavilio. And the side retired. Well, it looked promising. The Huskies only get one, though, out of a bases loaded, none out situation. But at least they're on the board. We go to the fifth after four complete. Beavers four, Huskies one. If you're in the dark when it comes to choosing an electrician, you're not alone. What makes Bellkirk Electric stand out? It could be their top quality customer service. Maybe it's because they do the job right the first time. Whatever the reason, folks keep calling Bellkirk Electric for all their commercial and residential power, light, and wiring needs. Get enlightened. Call Bellkirk Electric today. They're in your yellow pages. That's Bellkirk Electric. Fast, friendly, and reliable. Head coaches spend a lot of time planning for game day. If you're involved in construction management or have a special event, don't forget to plan for every detail, including your portable sanitation. Abel's Spiffy Biffy Portable Toilets specializes in portable restrooms and sinks. At your service for three generations, Spiffy Biffy Toilets are steam cleaned on site, making them the cleanest portable sanitation stations available. Now that's Spiffy. So remember, for all your portable restroom needs, it doesn't get any easier or cleaner than Spiffy Biffy. Top of the fifth here at Husky Ballpark, 4-1. to one. Oregon State in front. Washington getting their lone run on a ground ball double play that scored from third at catcher BK Santi on a bases loaded none out situation so kind of a good news bad news proposition for the Huskies as we open the fifth they only get one in a bases loaded none out situation but they're on the board trailing it four to one here's Ryan Barnes to lead things off in the fifth first pitch taken low and away the 1-0 pitch is at the letters with a fastball for a called strike 
So one ball, one strike count on Barnes here in the top of the fifth for Oregon State. He'll be followed by first baseman Danny Hayes. And it'll be the designated hitter, Kevin Kyes, as the pitch is popped up in foul territory near the stands on the first base side, and the count moves to a ball and two strikes. Now he hasn't given up a hit since that first inning. He gave up those four hits in a row, the two home runs, the two doubles. He hasn't given up one since. Barnes 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs to second baseman Reggie Jones. Here's the wind by Brigham and the 1-2. And that's grounded back up the middle into center field for a base hit. Good thing I said that. <laughs> that's the first hit since the aforementioned first inning. For Oregon State, for Barnes' his first hit of the afternoon. And a leadoff single here in the top of the fifth brings up the third hitter in the Beaver order, first baseman Danny Hayes. Well, let's try this again. We haven't seen a double play since... <laughs> Fifth hit of the afternoon again. The Beavers lead at four to one. We're in the top of the fifth, and now Brigham will have to go from the stretch again. The stretch by Jeff, and the pitch on the way is cut on and hit foul up and out of play over the third base stands. Hayes walked and scored in the first, also lined out a short in the third. He's 0 for 1. It was Hayes's two out walk in the first seemingly innocent at the time hardly innocent after the inning when the Beavers went on to score four in the top of the first here's Brigham from the belt the look to first and the pitch on the way and that one tails over the heart of the plate strike two called quickly no balls two strikes on Danny Hayes Hayes coming into the game a 274 average two home runs 29 batted in he does have a team-high 30 strikeouts and 124 at-bats. This would be an opportune moment for Brigham to pick up his third strikeout of the afternoon with a leadoff man on. Here's the stretch in the 0-2. That's up and in. One ball and two strikes the count. Beavers running last night, 6-4 to four at Safeco. And again, with the win, maintaining their lead in the Pac-10. Now 15 and four in conference for Oregon State. 36 and 11 overall. And a really nifty number two ranking in the country. Here's the stretch by Brigham. Peers over his shoulder, kicks and deals. And that's down low. Now the count evens, two balls, two strikes. Great crowd here on a Saturday afternoon for two at Husky Ballpark. And again, no official time in between, but it'll be anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes in between the two games today. You will hear both of them right here on AM 1150 KKNW. 2-2, another turn and a throw to first. It's Gary Hill's favorite spinnaker sailing by in Lake yes. Washington off in the distance. There it is. Any fan of the TV show Magnum P.I., the helicopter with that brown, yellow, and orange tandem. That's what the spinnaker looks like. And there's Magnum's Ferrari on 520 in the background. Here comes the 2-2. Runner goes. Slider, strike three called. Throw down to second is in time. A strike him out, throw him out, double play. So Hayes gets caught looking. It's Santi guns down Barnes trying to swipe second. How about it? Two down now here in the top of the fifth. Okay, so I just asked for things now. Is that a million dollars? <laughs> there was your double play. Oh. Here's Kai's, the designated hitter, standing in from the left side. He's one for two. Pitch on the way by Brigham. Is a changeup for a strike, 0 and 1. Kays doubled in a run and scored in the first, struck out swinging in the third. He's 1 for 2. Now the wind's starting to pick up a little bit here. Wasn't exactly thrilled with that strike call. Here comes the 0 1. That's a slider down low, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. 
I've noticed Oregon State fans are generally not happy with any strike call against Beaver hitters. I don't think any fan is happy with any strike on any of their own. I guess that's probably accurate. Here's the 1-1. Chopped out to first. Scott will field it cleanly, and the first baseman will go to the bag himself. Side retired. Little strike about throw about double play, followed by a ground out. And as we go to the bottom of the fifth, after four and a half, it's the Beavers four, the Huskies one. Whether you're a homeowner or contractor, your next building or remodeling project is only going to be as good as the products you use. That's why every project should start with a visit to Limbach Lumber Company in Ballard or online at limbacklumber.com. You'll find a large selection of millwork, decking, and lumber and a very knowledgeable and helpful staff. Since 1930, Limbach Lumber, quality lumber and personalized service. As you enjoy baseball season, think about the game that is life. Are you in shape financially to play beyond the fifth inning? What would happen if your life went into extra innings? At Edward Jones, we have a lineup of financial solutions to help you through the game of life. Tax advantage investments to increase retirement savings in the case of extra innings. Long-term care insurance to help with some of life's errors. And life insurance to prepare for the final tally. To learn more, call All Century Team member Dwayne Covey at 206-524-0050. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Leading off the fifth for the Diamond Dogs, the left fielder, Joe May. We go to the bottom of the fifth at Husky Ballpark, 4-1 to one Oregon State here in game one of this doubleheader on a Saturday afternoon in the sunshine here in Seattle. Joe Meggs, the Husky left fielder, to lead things off for the Dogs. He'll be followed by Jacob Lamb and cleanup hitter Troy Scott. First pitch on the way by Gavilio. Meggs wanted to hold up but couldn't. Just kind of waves through it for strike one. Owen won the count on Joe. He's 0 for 2. Strikeout looking. Ground out to short. 4 to 1 here in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the wind by Gavilio and the pitch on the way. And that one's ripped into the hole between short and third for a base hit. That is already the eighth hit of the afternoon for the Huskies. All of them singles. They've had base runners every inning. They've had third hits baseman, every Jacob inning. Lamb. They've only been able to come through with one run so far. Oregon State defense has been pretty solid to keep them help keep them to one, but we'll see if the Huskies can finally put something together, put a big inning on the board. They're swinging the bat well. And here comes a guy who's really swinging the bat well. Jacob Lamb, the hitter, two for two. A couple of well-struck balls so far on his resume today. Pitch on the way is inside for ball one. Lamb, a ground ball single to the right side in the first and then an opposite field single to left in the third. He's two for two and already coming into the game, Lamb was hitting 326 with three home runs and 24 batted in. Here's the pitch. That's chopped foul outside the bag at first. First base coach Jordan Tuig again sticking the arm out there and getting his palm on it. Slow it down before tossing it to the stands. One ball, one strike, the count on Lamb. Megs off the bag, leading it first. Gavilio from the belt. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. And that's ripped down the line, foul. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Lamb way out in front. He's been one of the more consistent hitters in the Husky lineup all year long, Jacob Lamb. Troy Scott in the on-deck circle. Dogs trail at 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the fifth. A ball and two strikes from the stretch. Cavilio pitch on the way. Check swing. Did he go? Appeal is made. And he did not. Two and two the count. The Oregon State contingent in disagreement. Well represented in the stands here today, no doubt. And last night at Safeco Field, the announced attendance, 2,823. Two and two the count. Lamb from the left side. Gavilio gets the signals now from the stretch. 
Megs the lead from first. Here comes the pitch, and that's chopped to the right side. Might be two. Rodriguez boots it. He wanted to turn and already looked to second, but the ball did not travel there yet. And that's the second error by Oregon State, both up the middle. And the Huskies for the second straight inning with a chance to build off an error by a middle infielder for the Beavers. It was the error to lead it off by Dunn in the fourth. And now here after a leadoff single by Meggs, an error on Rodriguez. Two on, nobody out for the Dogs here in the bottom of the fifth. And Pat Casey is pacing in the dugout. He is uh, not pleased with this. The second error already on Oregon State. This one's ripped foul up the first base line by Scott. Got a first pitch slider that he was out in front of. Owen won the count. A team that relies on defense. And they have opened the door for the Huskies again. But can they take advantage? Only able to push one across in the last frame. And again, it should be mentioned, with Oregon State's bullpen, you don't want to get too, too deep in this game trailing the Beavers. Here's the stretch and the 0-1. And that's on the inside corner. Strike two. So he's got a big exhale before exiting the batter's box and taking a warm-up swing. And now Junior's going to have to work himself out of an 0-2 hole. Megs at second. Lamb at first. Bottom of the fifth. Huskies trail at 4-1. Here's the stretch. The look to second. And the 0-2 pitch on the way, high, ball one. Scott, one for two, with a ground out and a single. The Huskies with eight hits, all of them singles. And a golden opportunity here, two on, nobody out. Here's the 1-2 pitch on the way, and that one's hit foul up and out of play. So Scott fighting it off. Eric Peterson, the DH in the on-deck circle. Wonderful day here at Husky Ballpark. Good crowd, good atmosphere. You get the two Northwest rivals. A one-sided rivalry of late, however. Here's the one-two. And that's ripped into the gap toward center, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. Late jump by Megs. He can only move up 90 feet. And hustling back to the bag at second is Lamb, and the Huskies have the bases loaded. Boy, Scott covered that pitch and lined it into center. Good job by the center fielder, Miller, to come over and cut it off. And the Huskies, for the second straight inning, find themselves in a bases loaded, none out situation. Well, he hit it so hard, Miller able to get and jump on it quickly and throw the ball in. Lamb took a big turn at second. He was going to third and then realized late that Megs wasn't going home, had to hold and scamper back to the bag as Oregon State threw behind. And here we go, bases loaded again for the second That's straight inning. Eric Peterson. So here's Eric Peterson. That is the ninth hit of the afternoon, and you guessed it, every one of them singles. Oh, they wouldn't mind another single right here. No kidding. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's a slider that spins high and away for ball one. And now a couple more bodies heading out to the Oregon State bullpen beyond the wall in left field. Huskies trail at four to one here in the bottom of the fifth, but they've got the bases loaded, nobody out, and a 1-0 count to the D.H. Peterson. Here's the pitch, and that's hit out to second. It'll be caught, and then stepping on the bag, a double play as Rodriguez got the glove underneath it before it hit the turf and goes to second to double off Lamb, and so it has gone for the Huskies. It could have been perhaps a triple play as after touching second, Rodriguez threw down to third to try to get Megs off the bag, but he got back in time. And for the second straight inning, a bases loaded, none out situation results in a double play. Well, not much that Lamb could do about that. Uh, Functionally, didn't quite do it right. You're supposed to freeze in a line drive. He was leaning towards third, but it wouldn't matter anyway. He was so far off the base. Easy double play. Second straight inning. Runners on the corners. The only difference is the Huskies got a run in on the double play last inning and cannot say the same here. Here's BK Santi. First pitch on the way is a slider down and away for ball one. 
Boy, this offense is snake bitten in the uh, early few innings today. Nine hits, just one run. But runners on the corners and a 1 0 count to Santi. Here's the pitch. And that misses for ball two. Santi 0 for 2. Grounded into a double play, reached on an air. He did score the game's only run for the Huskies, who trail at 4 to 1 here in the bottom of the fifth. Megs at third. Scott off the bag at first. Here's the stretch in the 2 0. And that's hit to right center field and deep. Long run for Miller, trying to chase it down to the gap. Won't get to it. Going to get all the way up against the wall. Coming in to score easily is Megs. Rounding second is Scott. They're going to wave him around third. He will come in and score on a two out, two run double by BK Santee. And we got a new ball game. The Huskies within one. It's now the Beavers four and the Huskies three. Well, they're waiting for their first extra base hit in the ball game. And they got it with hit number 10. As Santi showing a lot of power in this series. A home run last night, a double here to drive in two, and that's the big hit they were looking for. And just like that, just down by one. RBIs number 13 and 14 on the season for Santi as Megs scored easily and Scott relatively easily all the way up from first who was running on contact with two out. Here's the pitch on the way to Brian Wolf, and that's down and in for ball one. Santee leading off second now, representing the tying run as the Dogs get two more back here in the fifth and now only trail it four to three. Wolf, a 1-0 count. He's reached base in each of his two plate appearances with a single and a walk. So he's one for one. 1-0 one the count. Santee off the bag at second. Here's the pitch. And that's chopped out to first behind the bag. It'll be gloved by Hayes. He'll go to the base himself. Side retire, but not before the Huskies get two runs off three hits and an error. As we go to the six, a new game. Huskies still trail it, but only down by one. It's the Beavers four and the Huskies three. The players on the field today didn't start their careers at the collegiate level. Thanks to their parents and coaches, they learned valuable skills through youth sports programs. The following sponsors encourage you to get your children involved. ENJ Cabinets, Johnson's Auto Repair, Clean Crawls, and Bell Kirk Electric. A lot of players on the east side head to the UW to play for the Huskies. A lot of Husky fans on the east side head to Eastside Automotive and Tire for all their auto needs. Why? Because like the Huskies, Eastside Automotive strives to be a champion. Visit them at 12676 Northeast 85th in Kirkland or online at eastsideautomotive.com. Eastside Automotive and Tire, whether it's automotive repairs, maintenance, or quality brand name tires, you deserve to work with a champion. Top of the sixth here at Husky Ballpark. Washington climbing back in it after trailing four to nothing. After three, the Huskies get one in the fourth, two in the fifth. And as we go to the sixth, only trail it by one now at four to three. Jeff Brigham still on the mound for the Dogs as he goes into the top of the sixth after allowing four in the first and throwing four scoreless Afterward, here's Andrew Susak, the heavy hitting catcher, swing and a miss. The first pitch to Susak. 0 and 1 the count. Susak, hot sack. 0 and 1 the count. Susak, a two run homer back in the first, and he walked in the third. He's one for one. Yeah, with that first cut, he was looking for <laughs> home run number two in this game. That was a big, big swing. Brigham ready to go into the wide. Here comes the 0-1. That's a slider on the outside corner. Strike two call. Brigham has gotten stronger and stronger as this game has gone on. There is action in the Husky bullpen just in case. Oregon State milling around as well. Wheels starting to turn early in this one. Here's the wind and the 0-2. Check swing taken outside. A ball and two strikes. It's kind of what we saw last night as... Both these coaches went to the bullpen early. Starter for Oregon State, Osich, lasted three and two-thirds. Kane for Washington, four innings. Bullpen's doing a lot of heavy lifting last night for both teams. Brigham ready to go. Here's the wind of the one-two, and that's a fastball down low. It evens two balls, two strikes. Susak again with that home run back in the first. 
his fifth of the year. RBI's number 28 and 29, and he's not even had 100 at-bats on the year yet. With that hammate bone injury, you heard Gary mention. Here's the 2-2. Slider a little bit outside, a little low. And the count goes full. Three balls, two strikes. Still being very careful with Susak. Was, walked him in his last at-bat in the third. He does not want to leave anything out over the plate. Brigham a long look over that glove. Now spinning the ball in the glove. Here's the wind and the 3-2 pitch, and that's down low, ball four. And Susak draws a leadoff walk here in the top of the sixth for Oregon State. First up, Ryan Dunn. Here's Ryan Dunn, the shortstop. Dunn hitting a home run back in the first. That was part of those back-to-back home runs. Also hit into a fielder's choice. He's one for two. Huskies back in it after trailing four to nothing. Now it's a four-three game here in the top of the six. Beavers with the leadoff man on, and Brigham back to the stretch. Turn and a throw to first, and back to the bag standing is Susak. Hard to imagine that in this season, in which the Huskies are four and fifteen, that they are just starting to get to the meat part of their schedule in terms of difficulty. Dunn squaring to bunt, pitch on the way, way outside. Santee off with a mask, had to dive to the other batter's box to get that offering by Brigham. Yeah, Oregon State this weekend, the number two team in the country, number one team in the Pac-10, and next weekend doesn't get much easier with Arizona State visiting. Looks like Dave Dangler, the Husky pitching coach, out to visit with Husky starter Jeff Brigham. Aaron West has been warming up in that bullpen for a couple innings now. Husky fans, a reminder, if you're planning a wedding or another special event, you want to make it unforgettable, then call Emerald Cove Catering. They've been voted Best Caterer by you on King 5 Evenings Magazine's 2010 Best of Western Washington. Specializing in fresh Northwest cuisine, let them make your event a success. So turn off the stove and call the Cove. Find out more at emeraldcovecatering.com. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill. 4-3, Oregon State in front of Washington here in the top of the sixth. Again, this is the first of two today. We'll be broadcasting a doubleheader here on AM 1150 KKNW. Again, the decision made after the forecast of rain and lots of it coming to the area tomorrow. See if they can't get two in today and complete the series. 1-0 the count. Dunn standing in. Susak, who was able to draw the walk off the bag at first. And bring him again out of the stretch. Turning a throw to first, and again back to the bag standing is Susak. Arizona leading Washington State 2 to 1, top of the fourth. That's actually game one of the series. That'll be a Saturday, Sunday, Monday series with the Wildcats and the Cougars. Here's the pitch, squaring to bunt, and a nice one up the right side is done. First baseman Scott will underhand to a covering second baseman Jones, and a sacrifice moving Susak down to second. Nicely done by Ryan Dunn on the sacrifice bunt. Third baseman put out one, or I should say three, four, and now with one down, the runner on second moving over via the sacrifice that brings up third baseman Carter Bell. Oregon leading Stanford 2 to nothing. bottom of the second. In non-conference play, UCLA and Cal State Bakersfield scoreless in the third. And Arizona State and USC yet to start. They're going to have a first pitch at 3 o'clock. So here's Carter Bell with a runner on second, one-out situation. And the first pitch is right there for strike one. Bell won for two, doubled in the first, lined out a short in the fourth. He's stung the ball each of his first two plate appearances today. Four to three Beavers here in the top of the sixth. And Brigham, who gave up the four spot in the first, has settled down nicely. He's in a 
little bit of a jam here with one out and a runner in position. Here's the 0-1, and that bounces in. Nice stop by Santi, who had to go to the opposite batter's box to get there and keep it in front. Cal goes to a ball and a strike on Carter Bell. That wind starting to pick up again. High, wispy clouds. Otherwise, a very pleasant day here today at the ballpark. A lot of sleeves, short sleeves out there in the stands. One and one the count. Brigham ready to go. And the pitch. And that's hit foul up and out of play off the hands. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. We will have game two on the air after we're done here. About 30 or 40 minutes in between the games. Oregon State taking game one last night 6-4 to four in a seesaw special. That thing went back and forth in the middle innings before Oregon State took the lead and got one insurance run in the ninth late to take it 6-4. And here's a pitch on the way, and that's down and away. Two balls and two strikes the count. This game not quite seesaw, but it certainly feels similar. Huskies in the game last night, in the game today. The problem playing a team like Oregon State, this is what they do. They play close games. They win close games. Two and two the count on Bell. Right-handed hitter, the third baseman. Outfield straight away. A little bit toward right center for center fielder Brendan Gardner-Young. Here's the pitch. Slider hits the center field and deep. Gardner Young back on the ball. Will get in front of the track and get underneath it and make the catch. And there are two down. Given a ride, but a fly out to deep center by Bell. And now with two down, back to second goes Susak. And it'll be right fielder Jared Norris coming to the plate. Norris played first base last night and hit third in the order. Today, he's the right fielder, and he's batting eighth. Norris, left-handed hitter, 0 for 2 with a ground out and a fly out. And, boy, if Brigham can get the final out here, he's going to have himself a pretty good comeback after that four spot. With first base open, they're going to put Norris on intentionally. And take their chances with Rodriguez, the ninth hitter. Right-handed hitter. Two go wide of Norris, so they're going to put him on and have runners on first and second with two down here in the top of the six. I mean, it looked like it would be a disastrous outing for Brigham in the first. A two-out walk, then a run-scoring double, a two-run homer, a solo homer, another double. And in all honesty, it looked like there was a good chance he wouldn't get out of the first, but... He was able to and then settle down and has pitched four scoreless since. And trying to put that fifth consecutive scoreless inning up here with two out in the sixth. As the third and fourth pitches sail wide of Norris and he'll toss the bat aside. The intentional walk put Norris on first. As they're going to go after the right-handed bat, the ninth hitter in the order, second baseman Jake Rodriguez. Well, going back to the first inning, there was action going to the bullpen and there was fear in the first game of a doubleheader. The last thing you want is your starter getting knocked out early. But he has really settled down and pitched well since. This key situation here. Rodriguez popped up and also was hit by a pitch. His first two plate appearances. Uh, first pitch on the way to him is a slider outside. Ball one. The ninth hitter in the order. Coming into the game, hitting 306 on 15 of 49 for the year. Runners take their lead. Susak from second. Norris, who was intentionally walked from first. Four to three Beavers in the top of the six. Dogs trying to get that final out here in the top half of the frame. Brigham from the belt looks back to second. Hesitates, kicks, and deals. And that's a little bit outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Now Santi wants time. And you certainly have to get Rodriguez, the ninth hitter in the order here, before allowing not only the lineup to be turned over to Miller, but he's going to be hitting from the left side. So you got your desired matchup here, and you just got to find the strike zone if you're Jeff Brigham, who has fallen behind at two balls, no strikes. He hit Rodriguez the last time he faced him in the fourth. I don't know if hit is the right term. Barely getting a piece of his jersey. Graze is a much more accurate term. 
Here's the 2-0. And that one's a fastball at the letters for strike one. Two balls, one strike. Of course, in the box score, he drilled him in the ribs, right? Right. Two and one the count. Big situation here for Husky right-hander Jeff Brigham with two on. And he trails it four to three here in the top of the six. Beavers take their leads off the bases. Here's a stretch by Brigham in the 2-1. Swing and a miss. That ball going down and in. Throw down to first, but sliding underneath it is Norris. As Santee tried to catch the base runner off guard to no avail. But the count moves to two balls, two strikes. And if that swing is any indication, Rodriguez was badly, badly fooled. Not a good cut. See what he dials up here as the wind picks up again. Two and two the count. Brigham stares into Santee, gets his series of signals. Now goes to the glove. Runners take their leads. The look to second. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. This one's lifted high and deep to left field. And this one is gone. A three-run home run by Jake Rodriguez on a 2-2 pitch. And Oregon State has itself a four-run cushion again. 7-3 Beavers for Rodriguez. That is his first home run of the year. And only his third, fourth, and fifth runs batted in of the year as the light-hitting nine-hole hitter whom the Huskies intentionally walked to get to comes back to bite him with a three-run home run. It's now 7-3 Oregon State. And to make it even more improbable, he did it with two strikes coming off of a just horrid swing. A swing where he was badly fooled, and he comes back and just launches one out of here to left field. The third home run of the game for Oregon State. So here's the leadoff man, Michael Miller, and a collective groan from the Husky faithful here at the ballpark. Oregon State back in front by four here in the top of the sixth. And they lead it seven to three. Here's the wide of the 1-0 to Miller, and that one misses outside, ball two. So Susak and Norris score in front of him. Jake Rodriguez, a three-run homer. His first of the season, and as I mentioned, only his third, fourth, and fifth runs batted in. Here's the 2-0, and that one's at the letters, called strike one. He really turned on it. Beavers scoring in bunches, four in the first, three more here in the six, and they lead it seven to three. For Rodriguez, how about this, his first hit in Pac-10 play. Here's a 2-1 lifted to shallow left center, coming over the center fielder Gardner Young, and he'll make the catch, but not before the Beavers do more damage via the long ball. A two-out, three-run homer by ninth hitter Jake Rodriguez. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth, it's a four-run game again. It's Oregon State 7 and Washington 3. Everyone wants to be healthy. Your friends at General Nutrition Center in Factoria Mall, Bellevue, can help. They offer a wide variety of products for a healthy lifestyle. Whatever your goal is, bring it to GNC in Factoria Mall. Their staff is friendly and knowledgeable and will help you find the right products to suit your budget, your lifestyle, and your health care needs. Ask about their membership program and save 20% all year long. That's GNC of Factoria Mall in Bellevue. Proud Husky supporters. Hey fans, you already know Round Table Pizza is a great place to take the family. Keep them in mind when it comes to your year-end sports banquets, whether it's t-ball, soccer, or any sport. The East Side Round Tables can host banquet meetings and parties of all sizes. And of course, you'll always receive the best pizza in town. In Overlake, Woodenville, and Issaquah, there's a round table near you. Hurry into your local round table pizza in Overlake, Woodenville, or Issaquah and ask for your free Husky glass, available while supplies last. This is Alternative Talk, 1150 AM, KKNW Seattle, and KLCK FM 98.9, Digital HD3 Seattle. Now playing second base and batting ninth, number one, Tyler Smith. Leading off for the door, shortstop, Ty Appner. A couple of defensive changes for Oregon State as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Put Brian Stamps in center field for Michael Miller. And put Tyler Smith at second base 
for Jake Rodriguez. Congratulations, Jake, on your three-run home run. Now have a seat. Here's the first pitch on the way in the bottom of the sixth inning. That's a strike in and over against Husky shortstop Ty Afner. The 0-1 pitch chop foul into the Oregon State dugout. A three-run home run by Jake Rodriguez. Talk about pushing the right buttons, too. He had had two Pac-10 at-bats, two Pac-10 at-bats coming into this game. And here he is coming through with a big three-run home run. So now a 4-3 game becomes a 7-3 contest, and the 0-2 to Afner checks his swing. Did he go? The appeal made? No, he did not, according to first base umpire Ryan Bleiberg. Well, Oregon State had four Pac-10 home runs as a team coming in, and they've almost matched that in this game with three long balls. One and two the count to Afner. Dogs trying to dig out of a four-run deficit again here in the bottom of the sixth. Swing and a miss, and down goes Afner. That is only the third strikeout of the afternoon by Gavilio. You know, that three-run home run, it's really too bad. Brigham's outing is going to... You look at the numbers, it's not going to look that great, but it's really much better than the numbers would indicate. I think, for the most part, he's been really good in this game. You know, that four spot in the first inning hurts. Scoreless in the second, third, fourth, and fifth. But then again, the three-run bomb in the sixth inning. Here's the first pitch to Reggie Jones, the ninth hitter for the Dogs, and the Husky second baseman chops it foul behind the plate. Owen won the count in the bottom of the sixth. Now the Huskies trail at 7 to three, Beavers playing long ball. Here's the 0-1, and that hit him right in the back. So Jones aboard at first with one down, and that turns the Husky lineup over. Here's the leadoff man, center, center fielder, fielder Brendan, Brendan Gardner Young. He is 0 for two. A couple of ground outs and a fly out. There is activity in the Oregon State bullpen. Huskies have scored in each of the last two innings: two in the fifth, one in the fourth. They try and get right back to work, facing another four-run deficit. G.Y. standing in, the Husky leadoff man from the left side. One-on-one one out for the Dogs here in the bottom of the sixth. Here's the stretch by Gavilio and the pitch on the way. And a little change in and over for strike one. Good off-speed delivery there. Joe Meggs in the on-deck circle. Seven runs, six hits, two errors for the Beavers. Three runs, ten hits, no errors for the Huskies. Here's the 0-1. Chopped foul behind the plate. The count goes to no balls, two strikes. Megs on deck. But Gardner Young in the hole at no balls, two strikes, one down, one on for the Dogs here. Trailing it 7-3. to three. Gavilio ready to go from a stretch. Here's the pitch on the way, and that drifts outside. Ball one. Jones, who was hit by a pitch on an 0-1 offering, the lead off the bag at first. Huskies have had a base runner every inning. One ball, two strikes, the count. See what Gardner Young can work with here. The stretch by Gavilio, the pitch on the way, and that's a breaking ball down low. Good eye by Brendan there to even the count. Two balls, two strikes. That's a tough one to lay off. Uh, The Beavers, talk about efficiency. Six hits, but seven runs. Meanwhile, Washington, ten hits, just three runs. Three long balls making the difference. Two and two the count to Gardner Young. Jones off the bag at first. The stretch by Gavilio and the pitch on the way upstairs. Ball three. Good job by G.Y. to work this count full after starting 0 and 2. Huskies need some base runners down by four here in the bottom of the sixth. Got the middle of the order coming up. Megs, the two hole hitter in the on deck circle. One on one out situation. Here's the stretch. Gavilio with the payoff pitch, and that one's hit foul straight back against the padding underneath the screen behind home plate. So we'll do it again. Another 3 2 pitch forthcoming. Now the sun behind the high clouds here at Husky Ballpark. This is game one of a scheduled doubleheader today. Due to concerns over the forecast tomorrow, which predicts for rain and lots of it on a 
getaway day. Here's the 3 2 again. Chopped foul. This one outside the bag at third. So Garner Young staying alive, still 3 and 2. Seven to three Beavers were in the bottom of the sixth. Oregon State getting a four spot at the very top of the first and getting three more in in the top of the sixth moments ago. Huskies with a full count, one on, one out. Here's the stretch by Gavilio. The payoff pitch again, swung on and missed, and down goes Gardner Young. And that's now four strikeouts for Gavilio in the second of this inning. And now there are two down. Left fielder, Joe Meggs. So here's left fielder, Joe Meggs. Meggs, one for three, singled and scored in the fifth. Also grounded to short, struck out looking. And we're going to have a meeting at the mound. I'm not sure if the pitching coach, Nate Yeske, has the hook with him or not. But I believe they will make a pitching change. Okay, so that's it. For the starter in this one, Sam Gavilio gets a nice round of applause. The base runner, still his responsibility with two out of the bottom of the sixth. The Beavers making the pitching change. It is 7-3. Oregon State Huskies will come back at the plate with a one-on, two-out situation. As the new pitcher comes into the ball game, Scott Schultz. As Schultz takes his warm-up pitches, we'll take this two-minute timeout. Neighbors are great sources of advice. It's no different when it comes to your health. You just need to talk to the right neighbor. Like your UW Neighborhood Clinic, part of the UW Medicine Health System. Take it from Steph Walker, who breathes easier without the bronchitis. Or the Renoir family, whose girls have their annual checkup every November. You'll find seven UW Neighborhood Clinics across the Puget Sound region. UW Medicine Health System. From here, we change the world. Read more stories at uwmedicine.org slash stories. Want to get organized? Want more space? Then contact ENJ Cabinets and make the most of your space with a Murphy wall bed. Today's wall beds are durable, sleek, reliable, and built for comfort while maximizing the space in your room. You can also save money with our pre-drilled, pre-finished, ready-to-assemble, do-it-yourself bed kit. For all your custom cabinets and Murphy wall beds, call 206-375-3211 or compare our prices at murphybedseattle.com. Mention the Huskies for $100 off the installation of a Murphy wall bed. Hey, Lewis, did you see my proposal to Horizon Air and Alaska Airlines? The one about you wanting to identify all the Huskies and Cougars flying Alaska and Horizon out of Seattle? Yeah. So that Alaska and Horizon can designate one side of the aisle for Huskies. And the other side for Cougars. Yeah, who wouldn't see the brilliance of that? Do you know how many Huskies and Cougars fly together each day from Seattle? Well, what better way to bring them together? How about the football game? Lewis, Alaska and Horizon serve Seattle with the most flights to the most cities. And seated across from each other, before long, Huskies and Cougars will realize, hey, we're not so different. Feel the love. Harmony, not rivalry. I think we need to test your theory. Yeah? I'll sit here. Uh Uh-huh. And you go sit somewhere else. Alaska Airlines and Horizon Air offer more flights to more cities from Seattle than any other airline in the Northwest. Find the lowest fares on Alaska and Horizon at alaskaair.com. All right, hander Scott Schultz into the ball game and the first pitch on the way to Husky left fielder Joe Meggs was out of the zone for ball one. The second delivery hit high. And shallow to right center going over. The center fielder stamps. And as soon as we come back, Schultz gets out of the inning. One batter face, two pitches, and the final out of the inning recorded. We are done with six. As we go to the top of the seventh after six complete, it's the Beavers seven and the Huskies three. Neighbors are great sources of advice. It's no different when it comes to your health. You just need to talk to the right neighbor. Like your UW Neighborhood Clinic, part of the UW Medicine Health System. Take it from Steph Walker, who breathes easier without the bronchitis. Or the Renoir family, whose girls have their annual checkup every November. You'll find seven UW neighborhood clinics across the Puget Sound region. UW Medicine Health System. From here, we change the world. Read more stories at uwmedicine.org slash stories. A lot of players on the east side head to the UW to play for the Huskies. A lot of Husky fans on the east side head to Eastside Automotive and Tire for all their auto needs. Why? Because like the Huskies, Eastside Automotive strives to be a champion. Visit them at 12676 Northeast 85th in Kirkland or online 
at eastsideautomotive.com. Eastside Automotive and Tire, whether it's automotive repairs, maintenance, or quality brand name tires, you deserve to work with a champion. We go to the seventh inning here at Husky Ballpark. Game one of a doubleheader. You'll hear both games here on AM 1150 KKNW. Oregon State in front seven to three over Washington. As we go to the top of the seventh, and a new pitcher into the ball game for the Huskies. It is Aaron West. West a week ago started and got a no decision at Stanford. Three and two thirds, six hits, one earned run, walked three. Fanned at six, also took the loss April 30th at Washington State. Three innings, seven hits, four earned runs. So West coming on in relief of the starter, Jeff Brigham. The numbers on West for the year, one and eight, with an ERA of 5.34. He'll be making his 13th appearance of the year. This is the first time he hasn't appeared as a starter. 64 innings for West, 78 hits allowed. Only 17 walks, 39 strikeouts, and an average against of 321. And as we go to the seventh, Oregon State will send it two, three, and four in the order. Barnes, Hayes, and Kai's going up against West, the right hander. And the pitch on the way by Westy is a fastball upstairs for ball one. Aaron West. Former Snohomish Panther, the sophomore at 6'1", 190 pounds, right-hander. Here's the wind and the 1-0. And that one's hit foul, up and out of play. Well, here we were talking about Oregon State scoring runs and station to station, everything they do, all the little things that makes them such a good team, and they explode for back-to-back homers in the first and a three-run homer in the sixth, and now they've got seven runs on just six hits. And they've played Earl Weaver ball today, which is appropriate because they're wearing orange. Here's a pitch on the way, and that's called strike two, a ball and two strikes on the slider to Barnes. West ready to go into the wind, and the 1-2 pitch on the way is hit to right center field. Going to be a long run, but Brennan Gardner-Young shades over toward right center, and he makes the catch. One down here in the top of the seventh. Oregon State in the orange tops, black letter and number. Danny Hayes. White pants with a black and orange stripe down the side of it. Huskies going with the all-white top and bottom. Purple letters, socks, and ball cap here in game one of this doubleheader. Again, it will be anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes in between games one and two. So we will quickly send it back to the studio at KKNW for a little while and then get everything set up for the broadcast of game number two today. And then that will, of course, be the third and final game of this weekend series as the first pitch to Hayes misses or actually hits the zone, I should say, at the knees for strike one. Owen won the count. Hayes walked and scored in the first, lined out to short, was caught looking. He's 0 for 2. The 0-1 hits him right in the knee. Hayes will toss the bat aside and trot down to first as West coming inside. and That ball, you can hear that thud off the bone. That is just never a sound you want to hear, no matter which side you're on. No. And he's only got about, uh, I don't know, 13, 14, 15, who knows how many more innings of baseball he has left today to play on that. And they're going to bring out a pinch runner right now and get him out of the game. That ball off the kneecap. Oh. And Hayes will leave. The pinch runner coming on. Running for Hayes, number 12, Garrett Nash. So Garrett Nash will pinch run for Hayes here in the top of the seventh. Get him dirty, let's go. So that'll bring up the designated hitter, Kevin Kyes. Turn and a throw to first, and it bounces away from Scott, and the pinch runner Nash will head down to second. So things going from bad to worse on that particular base runner that West is responsible for. He drilled the batter, and then he throws the ball away, trying to throw to first on the pinch runner leading off the bag. An air will be charged to Aaron West on the throw to first. 
First error of the afternoon committed by Washington, but in a 7-3 to game already trailing here in the top of the seventh, Huskies could ill afford to give up any more against this Oregon State team who boasts that great bullpen. Here's the pitch on the way. It's a slider at the knees for strike one. 0-1 oh the count to Kais, who had the, two, or the run scoring double back in the first and came around to score himself. Also struck out swinging and grounded out to first. Really strange lines for both teams. For OSU, 7-6-2. For Washington, 3-10-1. This one's lifted high and deep to right field. Wolf will look up, and this one is a goner. A long two-run home run by Kyes, and the Beavers pouring it on. That is their fourth home run of the day. And it is now 9-3 Oregon State. And as Gary tried to put it into perspective earlier, Catcher, Andrew Susan. Coming into the game, Oregon State only had four home runs in Pac-10 play the entire conference season. They've got four in one game today and now have a six-run cushion. Here's the pitch, and that's low and away in uh, a festive atmosphere down in the Oregon State dugout, no well, doubt. It was actually really funny. When Kais was going into the dugout, he, he thought his teammates would be there to greet him. Most of them were all still sitting down, so he just started high-fiving thin air. It's like, well, somebody's got to high-five me. Here's the 1-0, and that's a slider over for strike one. First pitch to Susak missing out of the zone. West getting rudely greeted here in the seventh in his first inning of work by the Beavers. Apparently they've become accustomed to hitting home runs. Four in Pac-10 play coming in, four today. Nine to three, Oregon State here in the top of the seventh. And just what I said, this is a slugging ball club that <laughs> plays, <laughs> they sit back and wait for the home runs. They hit a lot of two, three. <laughs> Well, Grand slams. Wouldn't that be? Isn't that what I said before yeah, the game? Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't remember. That's exactly I think that's what, what I said. Exactly what you said. No better revisionist historian than you. Yeah. I mean, look at their history. <laughs> so many home run hitters down <laughs> Jacoby Ellsbury, and it's, it's awesome to be right. Three and one to Susak. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's down and in. And on five pitches, Susak draws the walk and. This is a really tough situation because although West is getting roughed up here, this is the first of a double header. And there's no activity in the bullpen. This is going to be his inning whether he likes it or not. So just looking at things, they have seven hits, four home runs of the seven. They have a two doubles and one single. One One single. <laughs> Here's the pitch to Dunn, and the shortstop takes a fastball in the outside corner for strike one. Ryan Dunn for Oregon State hit a home run back in the first. Nice little sacrifice bunt, moving a runner into position in the sixth. Meanwhile, the Huskies, they've done their business with the singles. They have ten hits. Nine of them are singles. West steps off, looks the runner Susak back to the bag. Four in the first, three in the sixth, two more here in the seventh for the Beavers, who have totaled nine. Here's the 0-1, and that's a slider right there, a strike two called. Huskies get one in the fourth, two in the fifth for their three. Wind is really whipping. Yeah, it's certainly aiding a ball hit into the air, although a lot of the balls that uh, Oregon State had hit out probably would have been home runs regardless yeah, of the win. I, I don't think I can call any of them win dated. Here's the pitch on the way upstairs for ball one. One and two the count. And the wind, if anything, just adding a little style points. They've all been hit pretty well. One and two the count to Dunn. Of course, baseball's not track anyway. You can't take away anything just because it was win dated. Here's the one two. Check swing. Did he go? Appeal made. No, he did not. Two and two the count. Ryan Dunn. Right handed hitting shortstop. 
Beavers taking game one of this series last night, looking to take game two here in the first game of a doubleheader today, where we will see both the resumption and the conclusion of this series with these final two after last night's opener at Safeco Field. Here's the 2-2, and that's it foul up and out of play over to our right. You can tell it's a Little League day because every time there's a foul ball behind us, all you hear is stomping of the stands as herds of little kids stream from the stands and out the back gate looking for the foul ball. Well, no offense to the Husky pitchers, but if they want to find a ball, they should just stand behind the fences with an Oregon State up at the plate. Already hit four of them out. This one's popped to shallow center. Gardner Young coming in, and he will camp underneath it and make the catch. And there are two down here in the seventh. Third baseman, Carter Bell. So here's Carter Bell, the third baseman for the Beavers. He's one for three with a double, a line out, and a fly out. Beavers lead it nine to three here in the top of the seventh with two down. Now with the sun hidden behind a high cloud cover, cooling off a few degrees here at the ballpark. They're expecting a big system to come into the area tonight and all day tomorrow. Here's the stretch and the pitch on the way, and that's low and outside. Good stop by Santi. So it uh, precipitated this doubleheader that was made official yesterday afternoon before the ball game at Safeco Field as to get the games in before that system arrives tomorrow. At least that's the forecast. And that's a practice that... Certainly here in this neck of the woods has been taken up from time to time. This one's lined into the stands foul. Look out, or foul back into the stands, I should say. Everyone's okay. And a young fan gets herself a baseball. All's well that ends well. One ball, one strike to Bell. Runner on first. Susak off the bag with two down. We're in the top of the seventh. Beavers in front, nine at three. West ready to go out of the stretch. Here comes the pitch. This one hit high and foul and out of play toward the Husky bullpen down the right field line. A ball and two strikes now. Carter Bell, right-handed hitting at third baseman, came into the game hitting 302. Only 21 strikeouts and 130 at bats. So he likes to put the ball in play. Ball and two strikes. See what West dials up here with a runner on first and two down. Here's the stretch by Aaron. Here's over his shoulder. Here's the one, two. And that's a slider low and away. Again, a good stop by Santee, who's been a pretty busy guy behind the plate. And the count goes to two and two. Austin Voth will get the start in the second game today and the third and final game of this series the back end of the doubleheader here's a stretch by west and the 2-2 on the way this one's lifted right field and deep back on the ball is wolf he is on the track and will make the catch in deep right field side retired well another home run a two-run shot by kevin kyes and as we go to the bottom of the seventh the fans will take their stretch it's all beavers oregon state nine washington three building a contending team recruiting the best possible players and coaches. It's the same when it comes to construction work. If site work is part of your next industrial or commercial building project, the team to call is Anthony Construction Company. They're experts in all phases of industrial and commercial construction, including utilities, underground wire, and cable. Serving the area since 1987, Anthony Construction Company is your go-to team in construction, and they're proud sponsors of your Huskies. Pioneer Radio and Sports would like to thank the following businesses who are committed to customer service. Today's Huskies broadcast is brought to you in part by James G. Murphy Company. See them on the web at murphyauction.com. By MCR Roofing. Bad roof? No more. By Emerald Cove Catering Company. Turn off the stove and call the cove. By Clean Crawls. Excellence in serving people. And by Cedar Ridge Materials Incorporated. Spreading rock one driveway at a time.
Bottom of the seventh here at Husky Ballpark. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill, Oregon State in front 9-3. to three. It's game one of two today. Doubleheader action on AM 1150 KKNW. Again, it will be between 30 and 40 minutes in between games one base, and two. To first base, number 17, Jared North. Huskies trying to pull now, a rabbit out of a hat here, down by Jared six Nash. as they come to the and blade at the bottom of the seventh. Right, Defensive movement for Oregon State. That's Barnes will go from left to right. Yeah. Norris will go from right field to first base, and Nash will go to left for the Beavers. Scott Schultz on for his second inning of work. A line drive into left center field on the very first pitch. Hit to Jacob Lamb. A big turn at first and he'll head back to the bag and what a game for Jacob Lamb who's been on base all four times today. Three singles and a reach on air and Lamb takes the first pitch he sees first from Schultz boys. and goes the other way into left center for a long single. That is the 11th hit of the afternoon for the Huskies. Ten of those 11 are singles, however. Here's Troy Scott, the Husky cleanup hitter. We didn't really get an opportunity to even introduce Scott Schultz to you because he came on out of the commercial break in relief, and he ended up getting on a two-pitch at bat, the final out. Scott lining one long down the left field line. Long run, and a sliding catch made by Nash, the defensive replacement, and Lamb will have to scamper all the way back to first on a sliding play down the line and left by Garrett Nash. One down here in the bottom of the seventh. There's your defensive play of the game along with that double play turned on in the middle innings for Oregon State. Yeah, they've committed a couple errors in this game, but three plays really stand out. That diving play on the line, of course, the diving double play uh, back in the fourth inning, and then that line drive double play back in the fifth inning. So Oregon State, they put together some highlights defensively in this game. Here's the pitch on the way to Eric Peterson, the Husky DH. And it's there for strike one. Schultz came on to get the final out of the sixth on two pitches. He got Joe Meggs to fly out to shallow center. Schultz got the win in the game last night at Safeco Field in that 6-4 to four final. He's a kid out of Gig Harbor as the 0-1 pitch hits the zone for strike two. No balls, two strikes now. A freshman. It's kind of insult, too, when you look at the Oregon State bullpen. You've got Schultz from Gig Harbor. You got uh, Bryant down there, who's from Kennewick. And you have their other closer, Boyd, from the left side. He's from Mercer Island. So three of their bullpen studs from the state of Washington. Here's the pitch on the way. That one misses. One ball, two strikes the count on Peterson. Peterson, the Husky DH, singled back in the second, also struck out and lined out. He's one for three. One out, one on for the Huskies. Bottom of the seventh, Washington trailing Oregon State 9-3. to three. Here's the stretch and the pitch on the way. That one's chopped foul outside the bag at first. Schultz in last night's game, I mentioned he got the victory. He's now 3-0, and and he was outstanding in his effort. Two and two-thirds, just one hit allowed. That's it. No walks, no runs, struck out two. Get, goes eight of nine in the batters he faces. He, yeah, he, was, he had a very good night last night as did the whole Oregon State bullpen. Here's the one, two, and that bounces in. Nice stop by Susak there. Two balls, two strikes. Nygren struggled right out of the bullpen, but then Schultz, Boyd, and Bryant, they combined to shut out the Huskies, just giving up one hit, one base runner between the three. Two balls, two strikes. Lamb the lead from first. Here's the stretch and the pitch, and that's down low with a fastball. It goes full, three and two. It was five and a third innings between those three. Huskies exploded for some runs early in the ball game in the third and fourth, but then shut down the rest of the way. Here's the payoff pitch, and that's it. Foul up and out of play over the third base side. Good crowd here today. Great atmosphere. Great atmosphere. The sun's out. Stands are jammed. Three balls, two strikes. Schultz ready to go. The stretch, another payoff pitch. Swung on and foul tipped in and out of the glove of Susak. So it remains full. As you can hear the wind whipping around here. And some clouds now starting to come into the area. They're expecting a big system coming through tomorrow. As we've already mentioned several times today, here's the stretch. 
And Schultz with another payout pitch on the way. And that's again hit foul up and out of play over the third base side. So a good battle developing between Husky D.H. Eric Peterson and Beaver reliever Scott Schultz. Schultz, six foot, two inches, 200 pounds, a true freshman out of Gig Harbor High School doing it for Oregon State both tonight and this afternoon. Here's the stretch by Schultz. And the payoff pitch again. Upstairs, ball four, and the Huskies have two on with only one out. Well, they haven't been short of base runners in this game, that's for sure. The Huskies have left eight in this game. They've had plenty of base runners. A couple of double plays, though, have hurt the Huskies' cause. couple of other scores. Arizona State getting one in the top of the first at USC. They lead it one to nothing in the bottom half of the frame. UCLA in non-conference play an eight nothing lead over Cal State Bakersfield in the fourth. Here's the pitch on the way to catcher BK Santi and the Husky catcher swings and misses on the first offering by Schultz. Owen won the count. Santi a big two run double in the fifth that got the Huskies within one at that point four to three. Here's the 0-1 on the way, and that's chopped to the right side. Might get through. Diving stop. Beautifully done. The throw is made in time by Tyler Smith. Beavers flashing the leather here in the seventh. Two down on the play. Runners move up 90 feet, but when you're ahead 9-3, you're trading that for an out every time. And again, put a star next to that defensive play. The two outs in this inning recorded on an outstanding sliding catch by Nash. And then that diving stop by Smith, who came into the game in the six. Here's a ground ball back to the mound. Pretty good effort by Schultz to field this position. He'll shorten the distance and underhand to first. And there's your threat thwarted once again. We go to the eighth after seven in the books at Husky Ballpark. Beavers nine, Huskies three. Head coaches spend a lot of time planning for game day. If you're involved in construction management or have a special event, don't forget to plan for every detail, including your portable sanitation. Abel's Spiffy Biffy Portable Toilets specializes in portable restrooms and sinks. At your service for three generations, Spiffy Biffy Toilets are steam cleaned on site, making them the cleanest portable sanitation stations available. Now that's Spiffy. So remember, for all your portable restroom needs, it doesn't get any easier or cleaner than Spiffy Biffy. We all need advice sometimes. When it comes to your vision, talk to people who've been there. They'll point you to UW Medicine Eye Institute at Harborview. Like Dave Larson, whose glaucoma was caught and treated early. Or Monica Lowe, who thanks to refractive surgery can finally see without glasses. People across our region trust their vision to the UW Medicine Eye Institute. UW Medicine Health System. From here, we change the world. Request an appointment and read more stories at uwmedicine.org slash stories. Top of the eighth here at Husky Ballpark in game one of two today. Doubleheader action here on AM 1150 KKNW. The second game will start well, between 30 and 40 minutes after the conclusion of our first game here in which the Oregon State Beavers have a healthy 9-3 lead over the Washington Huskies here in the top of the eighth. Off the top of the eighth inning, first baseman Jared Norris. It will be 8-9-1 and one due up in the Beaver order. First baseman Jared Norris, who started the game in right field, will hit. And it will be Tyler Smith, the second baseman, followed by Brian Stamps, the center fielder. Aaron West, first pitch of the inning, and that drifts high and away for ball one. As you heard Gary mention a couple times, just an odd line. Nine, seven, and two for the Beavers. Three, 11, and one for the Huskies as the 1-0 pitch misses high for ball two. Well, the other number, the important number in this game is LOP, left on base. Oregon State, three, Washington, ten. Oregon State has cashed in on just about every opportunity in this game. Here's the 2-0 on the way to Norris, and that one on the outside corner, strike one. I, I just can't get over the fact, I think it's so odd, too, that Oregon State has exactly one single, and Washington has ten. Beavers, a very strange game. four home runs today for Oregon State. That wind blowing out to left. Here's the 2-1, and that one... Upstairs for ball three. That comment about the win doesn't reflect the home runs. Those balls were all well struck, and we both agree that 
Well, it would have been home runs had there been no wind out here today. Here's the wind and the 3-1. And that one's hit toward the hole. Past the diving first baseman, Troy Scott, and into right field for a base hit. So a ground ball single by Norris to lead things off here in the eighth. And the Beavers have their eighth hit of the afternoon. And here's the spot of the order that truly did damage, although it's not Jake Rodriguez who hit the home run. He was immediately taken out of the ball game after the three-run blast for his first Pac-10 hit. Three-run home run. Tyler Smith, the batter. Yes. That might have been a nice little way to exit. Hit your home run. Have a seat. Yeah. Did your part. Pitch on the way is there for strike one. As that wind continues to push the dust around here. Lead it first from Norris here in the top of the eighth in a 9-3 Oregon State game. They're going to try and bunt him across. They don't. Taking the pitch back for ball one. Smith tried to lay it down, but that pitch in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Did see for a moment Husky bullpen with Ben Guidus out there, but now I think it's just West from here on out. Here's the stretch by Aaron in the 1-1. Swing and a miss. Cal goes to a ball and two strikes. At this point, down 9-3 to three in the top of the eighth. I don't think you want to rifle through no. any more of your bullpen, if at all possible, with game two coming up right after this and game three and the final game of this series. Uh, you just want West to take one for a team and finish this one off. The one-two slider fouled up and out of play over the first base dugout, so it stays a ball and two strikes. And you hope it doesn't get ugly, but if it does, it's important this roll just to save guys for game two. That's what you have to do in a doubleheader. Tyler Smith, a 231 average. He's 25 of 108 on the year. No home runs, 11 batted in. A ball and two strikes against West. Here's Aaron from the stretch. And the one-two pitch on the way. High, ball two, two and two. And something we should watch for in the next couple of innings when the Huskies are up. They could do something to try and help them win game two, and that's to at least threaten, get some guys on, and try and get the two big studs out of the bullpen into this game and perhaps make them unavailable for the next game. But they have some work to do to make that happen. Trailing by six, nine to three here in the top of the eighth. This is a big game for a big day for Oregon State. They came in with a two game lead over Arizona State and UCLA and talk about putting pressure on those two schools. If they could win two here today and sweep the series over the Huskies. Here's the 2-2, and that's down low. It's gone full. Three balls, two strikes on Smith. Right-handed hitting second baseman. I mean, they would really be in the driver's seat as we wind down Pac-10 play. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out. A runner on first for the Beavers. Norris takes his lead. West from the stretch. Here's the payout pitch. Runner goes. Popped up shallow right center. Gardner Young coming over, but it'll be the right fielder, Wolf, to make the catch. And there's one down here in the top of the eighth. Now batting center fielder, Brian Stamps. Brian Stamps will be the hitter. Stamps coming into the game in the sixth to play center for Miller. So it's Stamps' first at bat of the game. He led off and played in center last night in the game at Safeco Field and went 0 for 5 with a couple of strikeouts. Did end up scoring a run. He's a 259 hitter, no home runs, 17 batted in. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's a slider right there. Strike one called. So one down, one on for the Beavers here in the top of the eighth. Double play depth up the middle defensively with Afner at short. And Jones at second, hovering close to the bag at second. Lamb even with the bag at third, even on the cut coming in. Here's the 0-1, and that's on the inside corner. Strike two. Stamps by his body language. Not fond of that call, but he's in the hole. No balls, two strikes. Hey. 
0-2 the count. Here's the stretch. West ready to go. Kicks and deals, and that's down and away for ball one. Snap throw back to first, but easily back to the bag is Norris. It is really kicking up here. You saw a windsurfer off in the distance get blown over and <laughs> go into the drink. <laughs> Well, they could stay up. They'd be going about 75 miles per hour. <laughs> Here's the one, two. Grounded toward the hole and through. Past the diving after it's short into left. A ground ball single by Stamps as he joins the party. It's the ninth hit of the afternoon for Oregon State. And the Beavers not done just yet. They've got runners on first and second. Only one down here in the top of the eighth. Already in front, nine to three. And that'll bring up Ryan Barnes, the right fielder. He moved from left to right in that sixth. That ball was actually hit at the six hole. After, though, he had his momentum going towards second base. Tried to go back and make the play and just couldn't quite get there. The ball hit hard enough. Runners take their leads. Huskies looking for a ground ball to where somebody is. This one's lifted to left field on a line. Meg's going back and will make the catch in left center. That ball was stung, but it was right in the general area of Husky left fielder Joe Meggs, and he comes down with a ball, two down here in the top of the eighth. Left fielder, Garrett Nash. The uh, Beavers not getting cheated on their swings or even many of their outs today. They are hitting the ball on the screws here in game one of this doubleheader. Here's Garrett Nash hitting from the left side. Nash came into the game as a pinch runner after Danny Hayes was hit on the kneecap. Oh, could hear that all the way up here. And yeah, that didn't sound good. Dull thud by a fastball from West. So Nash came in and then made a great sliding catch in the bottom of the seventh for the first out down the line and left. Gets his first chance to take a hack and the pitch on the way on the inside corner. Strike one called. Nine, nine, and two for the Beavers. Three, eleven, and one for the Huskies. Nine, <laughs> nine. <laughs> Runners take their leads. Norris from second, Stamps from first. Neither of which being held in a six-run game. Here's the 0-1, and that's down low. Snap throw down to second, and they got him. Norris picked off second off the throw from Husky catcher BK Santi. Wow. No errors, one man left. Couple of hits, one man left, one picked off. We go to the bottom of the eighth, still Oregon State. After seven and a half, it's the Beavers nine and the Huskies three. We all need advice sometimes. When it comes to your vision, talk to people who've been there. They'll point you to UW Medicine Eye Institute at Harborview. Like Dave Larson, whose glaucoma was caught and treated early. Or Monica Lowe, who thanks to refractive surgery can finally see without glasses. People across our region trust their vision to the UW Medicine Eye Institute. UW Medicine Health System. From here, we change the world. Request an appointment and read more stories at uwmedicine.org slash stories. Don't just change the face of your landscape. Unlock its potential with Cedar Ridge Materials. From small one-yard loads to massive excavation and retaining wall projects. Cedar Ridge Materials offers a diverse variety of services that will help transform the vision of your yard into reality. Whether it's topsoil, bark, sand, gravel, or excavating, land clearing, or trench digging, find Cedar Ridge Materials in your yellow pages or online at cedarridgematerialsinc.com. Cedar Ridge Materials. We go to the bottom of the eighth here at Husky Ballpark. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill. It's the first of two today between the Huskies and the Beavers. Oregon State, the upper hand here in game one so far, 9-3. to three. As we go to the bottom of the eighth, it'll be Husky shortstop Ty Affner, followed by second baseman Reggie Jones, and then leadoff hitter Brendan Gardner-Young. 8-9-1 and one in the order. A first pitch slider to Affner in and over for strike one. Schultz, the reliever, into the wide. Here comes the 0-1. Another slider lifted shallow toward right center. Out the second baseman. And it'll be Smith to make the catch in short right center. One down here in the bottom of the eighth. Second baseman, Schultz Reggie continues to do the job, although he got a lot of help in the seventh inning. The defense was sensational for Oregon State in the frame. 
three pretty good plays, including one by himself. Sliding catch by Nash in left. Also a nice diving stop by Smith and throwing out Santee down the line. And then that shot back to the mound that Schultz was able to flag and then underhand to first. First pitch on the way to Jones is fouled off. 0-1 the count. Here's the wind and the 0-1 on the way. Slider popped up a mile high. Catcher off with the mask. It will be Susak in fair territory just up the line from the plate to make the catch. And quickly two down here in the eighth. Center fielder Brendan Gardner. So pop up to the catcher, and that turns the lineup over. Here's a leadoff hitter, center fielder Brendan Gardner Young. GY 0 for 4. The only Husky not to reach base yet today. Standing in from the left side, and the pitch on the way is at the knees for strike one. Couple of ground outs, a fly out, and a strikeout today for GY, who went two for five with a run batted in and a couple of runs scored out of the leadoff post last night. This one's hit foul up and over the third base dugout, and quickly it's 0 2 on Gardner Young. Yeah, I think the Huskies uh, will be fine if they don't see any more of Scott Schultz. He went two and two thirds of scoreless relief for the win last night. Here's the 0 2 on the way, and that one. Uh, inside, almost got a piece of Gardner Young, but instead rolls to the backstop. A ball and two strikes, and uh, he's been awfully effective here today as well. Has the freshman Scott Schultz out of Gig Harbor for Oregon State. Yeah, a quick turnaround, too, and he's got the last out of the sixth inning, pitched the seventh, and here he is pitching the eighth. The one two swung on and missed, and the Huskies go in order here in the eighth. Gardner Young striking out for the second time today, and we head to the ninth after eight complete. Oregon State 9, Washington 3. Don't just change the face of your landscape. Unlock its potential with Cedar Ridge Materials. From small one-yard loads to massive excavation and retaining wall projects, Cedar Ridge Materials offers a diverse variety of services that will help transform the vision of your yard into reality. Whether it's topsoil, bark, sand, gravel, or excavating, land clearing, or trench digging, find Cedar Ridge Materials in your yellow pages or online at cedarridgematerialsinc.com. Cedar Ridge Materials. The Pac-10 is littered with animals like cougars, ducks, beavers, even our beloved huskies. Outside the Pac-10, it's important to prevent unwanted litters. The Seattle Animal Shelter encourages all husky fans to spay or neuter your pet. And if you're ready to add that new furry member to your family, visit us one mile south of the Ballard Bridge on 15th Avenue West. We have dogs, cats, puppies, kittens, even rabbits and critters all waiting for adoption. Call us at 206-386-PETS or go to seattleanimalshelter.org. We're not just the pound anymore. We go to the ninth in game one of a scheduled doubleheader this afternoon from Husky Ballpark. And so far, the visitors from Corvallis with the upper hand. Oregon State a 9-3 lead. It'll be Garrett Nash, who entered the game as a pinch runner in the seventh, a hitter. He was at the plate in the top of the eighth when B.K. Santi picked off the runner Norris at second base. So he'll get a chance to do it here in the top of the ninth, his first at bat of the game from the left side against Husky right-hander Aaron West. First pitch to Nash, and that's at the knees for strike one. Owen won the count. Nash, a 205 average. He's 18 of 88 on the year. One home run, 11 batted in. West ready to go. Here's the 101 pitch, rather, and that's upstairs. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Again, uh, we will send it back to the studios after this one is complete. And uh, about 30 to 40 minutes in that window after this first game is completed, we will begin game number two today and game number three in the final one of the series. The 1 1 pitch on the way, swung on and missed. Nash swinging right through it, and the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Oregon State playing long ball here in game one of this doubleheader, game two of the series. Four home runs today. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss. And Nash goes down on strikes. One down here in the top of the ninth. Designated hitter, Kevin Kyes. Kevin Kyes, the designated hitter 
Kaiser is having a ridiculous series. Yeah, he uh, hit a two-run homer last time up in the seventh, had a run-scoring double in the first, and all he did last night was go two for four with a couple of doubles and three runs batted in. Outside of that, he's been lousy. Yeah, but he hasn't hit a single. (laughs) That'll show him. Pitch on the way down low for ball one. Left-handed hitter, Kais is the DH. Came in hitting 323. West ready to go into the wide. Here comes the 1-0. And that one's hit to left field. Carried in that wind toward the line. Meg's underneath it. The Husky left fielder camping there and making the catch. And there's quickly two down here in the top of the ninth. In the bottom of the ninth, it'll That's be the Andrew two, Susan. three, and four hitters due up for the Huskies, but they will have a mountain to climb down by six with a nine to three deficit greeting them. Of course, got to get the final out here in the top of the ninth, and that's by no means out of the woods yet. Andrew Susak, the catcher, digging in. Here's the pitch on the way. That one's popped foul up and out of play on the first base side into the stands. Susak hit a two run homer back in the first, walked in the third, walked and scored in the sixth, walked in the seventh. Safe to say the Huskies pitched around him after that two run homer. Yeah. So he's one for one with a two run homer and two runs scored, three walks. One of the best there is in the country, hitting wise. Not a bad strategy to work around him. Here's the 0 1 on the way. And that one at the letter, strike two called. And- West ahead of Susak, no balls, two strikes. I'm guessing we'll see Susak in the second game as a DH. Unless they are, I mean, they're slowly bringing him along. He didn't play in the game last night, and maybe they don't want to tax him by having him play two in a row. Here's the 0-2, and that's away. Ball one. Well, he would have to be, you'd figure, a DH. If after, he's in the lineup at if, all. If he's in the lineup at all after catching the first game. Huskies wouldn't be sorry not to see him in the lineup. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm just fine with that. A ball and two strikes. West trying to get the final out here in the top of the ninth. There's the one, two, and that one misses upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Although Kais, who's been the DH in the first two games, has done a decent job yeah, in that he, spot. He, yeah, he's... A lot of uh, big, big performances out of the Beaver offense here. The 2-2 on the way. Strike three called on the outside corner, and that'll do it for the Beavers in the ninth. 1-2-3, top top of the ninth. Last call for the Dogs in game one of this doubleheader. We'll bring to you, and after eight and a half, we go to the bottom of the ninth. It's Oregon State 9, Washington 3. To make it in this league, you need to give 100%, 100% of the time. Why would you expect anything less from your auto mechanic? The professionals at Seattle Auto Service Center are the area's leading automotive professionals. They feature ASE certified technicians, trained and certified to perform diagnosis, repair and service on all systems of your automobile, truck and SUV. For all your auto repair and maintenance needs, visit them at 6718 Roosevelt Way Northeast or find out more at seattleautoservicecenter.com. Installing, refinishing, or restoring your hardwood floors? Artisan Hardwood Floors provides the highest quality craftsmanship at the most affordable price. For generations, we've been working hard to earn your trust and exceed your expectations. We're experts in all types of hardwood services and specialize in Swedish finish with a wide range of color and top finishes. Whether it's installation, sanding, refinishing, restoration, or stair work, call 206-933-1703 or 425-644-9639 or go to artisanhardwoodfloors.com. Last call for the Dogs here in the bottom of the ninth in game one of this scheduled doubleheader from Husky Ballpark this afternoon. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill with you. As the Huskies trail it 9-3. to three. And again, a programming reminder, we will have game two on the airwaves. We'll send it back to the studio. And in about 30 to 40 minutes after game one, we will bring to you the beginning and entirety of game two. And... We'll close out the series. It looks like Oregon State, unless the Huskies pull off a miracle here, are going to take the first two with a win last night and a 9-3 to lead here. Here's Joe Meggs. First pitch on the way here in the bottom of the ninth by Schultz in and over for strike one. Meggs, one for four on the afternoon, singled and scored back in the fifth. Here's the 0-1 that's chopped to third weekly. Nice charge and a short hop by the third baseman, Bell, and he throws on the run to get Meggs. One down as... 
The Oregon defense making up for a couple of errors in the middle innings, and they've really flashed their leather in the late stages of this game. That's six in a row put down, and a lot of that due to the defense. As Schultz, he's working on a, he's working on an old school save right here as he tries to finish it off and go with the last three innings. He went two and two thirds and got the win in relief in last night's game. Here's a pitch on the way to Jacob Lamb, and that one is there for strike one. Lamb has been one of the lone bright spots for the Huskies today. He's reached base all four at times, three singles and a reach on an error. So he's three for four. Owen won the count. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's down low. And he's got the LOB cycle. He's been left on first, second, and third. <laughs> Well, maybe he could leave himself on home. You can't really leave yourself there, I guess. You're, you're either there or you're not. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And that one's hit to center field and deep. Back on the ball is Stamps. He's going to look up and at the track make the leap off his glove. Rounding second and holding there is Lamb just inches away from a home run. But it will be a double by Lamb. He great effort by stamps to try and rob him of a home run i don't think that ball would have cleared probably would have hit off the very top of the wall where stamps was jumping but it will be a double clearly off the glove of a leaping stamps in center and how about that jacob lamb has four hits today a one out double here in the bottom of the ninth huskies trail at nine to three just the second Huskies extra base hit, and they found it on 12 of them. First pitch on the way to Troy Scott. Swing and a miss. 0-1 the count. Schultz looking for the final two outs. There's another swing and a miss on a changeup quickly. 0-2. Good off speed there by Scott Schultz. Right-handed freshman out of Gig Harbor. There is no one warming in the bullpen, and the way that Schultz has pitched, he has really set the Oregon State Beavers up nicely in game two of this doubleheader. No balls, two strikes. Lamb the lead off the bag at first. Here's the pitch, and that one missing a little bit low. A ball and two strikes. Lamb leading off the bag at second. Huskies 12 hits this afternoon. That was only the second extra base hit of the day by Lamb. The other 10 singles. Here's the one, two, and that one's hit high toward the line and near the boundary, a sliding catch will be made by Nash in left. Wow. The wind knocked that down, down the line in foul territory in left, and Nash sliding up against the fence makes the catch. Well, if you remember, oh. he did that to Troy Scott in his last at bat. He's made two sliding catches on Scott. What a play by Garrett Nash. And the Huskies are down to their final out here. You're going to leave after game one and then come back at your hand stamp at the main gate. The designated hitter. Eric wow, their defense Peterson. has been spectacular. They have some serious highlights in this game. Save the two errors on just routine, routine plays. But other than that, their defense has been great. Here's Eric Peterson, the DH. Pitch on the way, swing and a miss. Dogs down to their final out in game one of this doubleheader. They trail it nine to three. Nine runs, nine hits, two errors for the Beavers. 3-12-1 for the Huskies. The 0-1 chopped foul. Now the Huskies down to their final strike. <laughs> 0 and 2 the count. Two down, bottom of the ninth. Runner on second for the Huskies, but they trail it 9-3. to three. And a freshman, Scott Schultz out of Gig Harbor, trying to close it out for the Beavers. The stretch. Schultz is 0-2 on the way, down and in, ball one. Austin Voth, the freshman, will get the start in our second game today and the third and final game of this series, but the Beavers one strike away from winning this series by taking the first two. A 6-4 win last night 
and a 9-3 lead here today. A ball and two strikes. Again, Lamb leading off the bag at second. Beaver fans making the noise. Here's the pitch, swing and a ground ball out to second. Smith will gather it on a hop, throw him out, and game one is in the books. The Beavers have taken it by a final of 9-3, to three. and with it the series after winning last night by a final of 6-4. to four. Nine runs, nine hits, two errors for the Beavers, three runs, 12 hits, one error for the Huskies. This is game one of two on a doubleheader Saturday afternoon from Husky Ballpark. We'll take a brief timeout. We will wrap up game one, look forward to game two, and we'll continue with our coverage of Husky baseball in a moment. A final score, Oregon State Beavers 9, Washington Huskies 3. We'll wrap it up for game one right after this on IMG College. Lewis, my last text message asked if you were getting my text, and you texted back no. Strange times, Clark. I sent you a link to Horizon Air and AlaskaAir.com. As long as you're not asking to friend me. There were all sorts of interesting things there. Can you guess how many miles you get just for signing up for the mileage plan? Seven. Five hundred. Hmm. Close. And guess how many flights Horizon and Alaska have out of Seattle? Seven. I'll give you a hint. More than any other airline. Seven. More than 200. And how many cities Alaska and Horizon fly to nonstop from Seattle? Not seven. I have no idea, but I bet I could find it online. You do that, and then go to IWishClarkWouldShutUpNow.com. Once I have the answer, I'll text it to you. Text this, Clark. Lewis? Join the Alaska Airlines mileage plan and earn generous miles towards free worldwide travel on Alaska, Horizon, and our many mileage plan partners. Sign up today at alaskaair.com. If you're in the dark when it comes to choosing an electrician, you're not alone. What makes Bellkirk Electric stand out? It could be their top quality customer service. Maybe it's because they do the job right the first time. Whatever the reason, Folks keep calling Bellkirk Electric for all their commercial and residential power, light, and wiring needs. Get enlightened. Call Bellkirk Electric today. They're in your yellow pages. That's Bellkirk Electric. Fast, friendly, and reliable. Head coaches spend a lot of time planning for game day. If you're involved in construction management or have a special event, don't forget to plan for every detail, including your portable sanitation. Able's Spiffy Biffy Portable Toilets specializes in portable restrooms and sinks. At your service for three generations, Spiffy Biffy Toilets are steam cleaned on site, making them the cleanest portable sanitation stations available. Now that's Spiffy. So remember, for all your portable restroom needs, it doesn't get any easier or cleaner than Spiffy Biffy. Well, the Beavers have taken game one of this scheduled doubleheader this afternoon at Husky Ballpark by a final of 9-3. to three. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill back with you. Oregon State, nine runs, nine hits, two errors. Washington with three runs, 12 hits, and one error in a game that took two hours, 52 minutes. The Beavers jumped on the Huskies early. It turned out that they got all the runs they would need in the top half of the first when they... Broke through for four runs off Husky starter Jeff Brigham. Beavers playing long ball. A two-out walk, a run-scoring double, a two-run homer, and then a solo homer. It was 4 to nothing. Oregon State after one. We move to the bottom of the fourth. Washington, a golden opportunity with a bases-loaded, none-out situation, but they only get one in. It was 4-1 to one after four. Huskies made it interesting. They come to the fifth and scored two on a two-run double with two out. By B.K. Santee, the Husky catcher, it was 4-3. to three. Washington within one at that point, but the Beavers turned right around in the sixth, and they get three back and took, at that point, another four-run lead at 7-3. to three. The big hit in that inning, the three-run homer by Jake Rodriguez, whom the Huskies intentionally walked the hitter in front of him, Jared Norris, to get to, and uh, certainly Rodriguez made them pay. 7-3. to three. After six, we go to the seventh. Oregon State tacks on two more. You guessed it, another home run. A two-run shot by Kevin Kyes. That was the fourth home run of the game for the Beavers, and that was the score, 9-3, by which Oregon State won. The win going to Sam Gavilio. Gavilio's line, this is one of the more interesting you'll see, that results in a victory. Five and two-thirds, ten hits, three runs. None of them were earned. 
one walk, four strikeouts, but he picks up the victory and is now 10-1 and one on the year. Scott Schultz picked up the save. He was brilliant again for the second straight night. Three and a third, so he finishes it out and picks up his first save of the year and his first as a collegiate player. Two hits, did not allow a run, only walked one, fanned one. So a night after going, what, eight of nine, he goes 12 of 13, and I think the Huskies are going to be glad if they don't see Schultz in game three of this series in game two today. And I'm guessing they're not going to with the way he pitched uh, last night and the quick turnaround to today. He was outstanding, three and a third, finishing it off. And Oregon State, they've really set up their bullpen for game two, and that is not good for the Huskies with as good as this bullpen is. Jeff Brigham took the loss for the Huskies, and it'll be kind of a deceiving line on Brigham. It's six innings, six hits, seven runs, all of them earned four walks and three strikeouts. Brigham gave up the four spot in the top half of the first, then he threw four consecutive scoreless, and then when you get to the sixth, a three-run home run by a light-hitting second baseman batting ninth in the order, you'll read that line, and it looks ugly. Six innings, six hits, seven earned runs, four walks, three Ks, but, you know, I thought Brigham battled back nicely after getting roughed up for that four spot in the first, until that is when he gave up that shot in the sixth. Yeah, he pitched a lot better than that. You look at the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, and he only gave up one hit during that frame without uh, the time frame without giving up any runs at all. It was just the bookends that really did him in. The four runs in the first, the three runs in the sixth, the home run, the long ball was his problem in this one. And you're right, the line doesn't look great, but he, he did pitch better than the line looks. Aaron West went the final three innings in relief, gave up three hits, two runs, both of them earned, one walk, two strikeouts. Again, 9-3 the final. Oregon State, four home runs for a team that came into this game having four home runs in their entire Pac-10 schedule. They hit four today at Husky Ballpark. Again, uh, the big shot, well, they're, they're all big, I guess, in this game. 9-3 to three the final. I guess the last, the fourth of those home runs was simply icing on the cake. Kai's hit his first. Susak his fifth. Dunn his fourth. Rodriguez his first. As the Huskies fall by a final of 9-3 to three in game one. So here's what we'll do. The scheduled first pitch for game two in about 28 minutes from now at 4.30. So we'll send it back to the KKNW studios for about 15 or 20 minutes. We'll bring it back for pregame of game two as the Huskies will play game three total in the series, game two today as the second half of our doubleheader will close out this three-game weekend set. So far, not so good for the Huskies. A 6-4 to four loss in game one last night at Safeco Field. A 9-3 to three loss in game two today at Husky Ballpark and game three for the series and game two for today, the second end of our doubleheader coming up in about 20 minutes from now with our coverage first pitch in about 30 minutes from now. For just a brief moment, Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill saying goodbye, but we'll be saying hello once again in just a little short while from now for game two. Final score in game one of this doubleheader, Oregon State Beavers 9, Washington Huskies 3. Again, a programming reminder, coverage of the second game of our doubleheader. 20 minutes from now here on AM 1150 KKNW, you're listening to Husky Baseball on IMG College. Whether you're a homeowner or contractor, your next building or remodeling project is only going to be as good as the products you use. That's why every project should start with a visit to Limbach Lumber Company in Ballard or online at limbacklumber.com. You'll find a large selection of millwork, decking, and lumber, and a very knowledgeable and helpful staff. Since 1930, Limbach Lumber, quality lumber and personalized service. As you enjoy baseball season, think about the game that is life. Are you in shape financially to play beyond the fifth inning? What would happen if your life went into extra innings? At Edward Jones, we have a lineup of financial solutions to help you through the game of life. Tax advantage investments to increase retirement savings in the case of extra innings. Long-term care insurance to help with some of life's errors. And life insurance to prepare for the final tally. To learn more, call All Century Team member Dwayne Covey at 206-524-0050. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Clark, how about a donut? Thanks, Lewis. Is it vegan? I'm not sure. These are Dutch donuts from Sri Lanka. I'll pass. They're from the Donut of the Month Club. My first purchase with my new Alaska Airlines Visa Signature Credit Card. And don't forget about the 25,000 mileage plan bonus miles you got when your Alaska Airlines Visa card was approved. 
I know. I've already earned enough for a free trip. And I've got donuts. Is this frosting or fungus? You know, Lewis, when we add those miles to the miles we've already earned flying Horizon Air, we can redeem them for a round trip from Seattle to Hawaii on Alaska. Ah, perfect. Unlike these donuts. Maybe I'll go vegan. Top Hot now has a vegan donut. Lead on. I'm proud of you, Lewis. Hey, if I could get him with a side of bacon... I could really go for this vegan thing. Earn 25,000 mileage plan bonus miles when you're approved for the Alaska Airlines Visa Signature Card. Sign up today at alaskaair.com. This is Alternative Talk, 1150 AM, KKNW Seattle, and KLCK FM 98.9, Digital HD3 Seattle. A lot of players on the east side head to the UW to play for the Huskies. A lot of Husky fans on the east side head to Eastside Automotive and Tire for all their auto needs. Why? Because like the Huskies, Eastside Automotive strives to be a champion. Visit them at 12676 Northeast 85th in Kirkland or online at eastsideautomotive.com. Eastside Automotive and Tire, whether it's automotive repairs, maintenance, or quality brand name tires, you deserve to work with a champion. The players on the field today didn't start their careers at the collegiate level. Thanks to their parents and coaches, they learned valuable skills through youth sports programs. The following sponsors encourage you to get your children involved. ENJ Cabinets, Johnson's Auto Repair, Clean Crawls, and Bell Kirk Electric. Everyone wants to be healthy. Your friends at General Nutrition Center in Factoria Mall, Bellevue, can help. They offer a wide variety of products for a healthy lifestyle. Whatever your goal is, bring it to GNC in Factoria Mall. Their staff is friendly and knowledgeable and will help you find the right products to suit your budget, your lifestyle, and your health care needs. Ask about their membership program and save 20% all year long. That's GNC of Factoria Mall in Bellevue. Proud Husky supporters. Hey fans, you already know Round Table Pizza is a great place to take the family. Keep them in mind when it comes to your year-end sports banquets, whether it's t-ball, soccer, or any sport. The East Side Round Tables can host banquet meetings and parties of all sizes. And of course, you'll always receive the best pizza in town. In Overlake, Woodenville, and Issaquah, there's a round table near you. Hurry into your local Round Table Pizza in Overlake, Woodenville, or Issaquah and ask for your free Husky glass, available while supplies last. Neighbors are great sources of advice. It's no different when it comes to your health. You just need to talk to the right neighbor. Like your UW Neighborhood Clinic, part of the UW Medicine Health System. Take it from Steph Walker, who breathes easier without the bronchitis. Or the Renoir family, whose girls have their annual checkup every November. You'll find seven UW Neighborhood Clinics across the Puget Sound region. UW Medicine Health System. From here, we change the world. Read more stories at uwmedicine.org slash stories. Want to get organized? Want more space? Then contact ENJ Cabinets and make the most of your space with a Murphy wall bed. Today's wall beds are durable, sleek, reliable, and built for comfort while maximizing the space in your room. You can also save money with our pre-drilled, pre-finished, ready-to-assemble, do-it-yourself bed kit. For all your custom cabinets and Murphy wall beds, call 206-375-3211 or compare our prices at murphybedseattle.com. Mention the Huskies for $100 off the installation of a Murphy wall bed. This has been Huskies Baseball on the Washington Sports Network from IMG College. Brought to you by Alaska Airlines and Horizon A. For the lowest fares, guaranteed, visit alaskaair.com. And thanks for tuning in to Alternative Talk. 11.50 a.m. You hear that music, you know that it's time for another edition of the Galaxy of the Stars interviews uh, with me, Eric Ryder. And in this segment, it's one of my favorite segments to do because this is where I get to talk to uh, some of my favorite show hosts here on Alternative Talk 1150. And today is no exception. We're talking to Kim Ariano uh, of Ariano Consulting, but also, of course, of Walk the Talk with Kim, which is a relatively new program uh, here on the station. It airs uh, every Wednesday at 4 o'clock. And I'll let you in on a little secret here. Uh, we're taping this interview. 
interview just after we just wrapped up uh, with uh, the live show, uh, the Walk the Talk with Kim show, again, Wednesdays at 4, and you definitely need to tune in. So, Kim, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. And and I say it was a relatively new show, but the show's been on for a few months now. Yeah, I started my first show in early May, and I was part of the Chat with Women Network and uh, broke off, boy, I think it was in November, I think mm-hmm. is when I started doing the weekly show because I just loved it so much. And uh, we switched the format a little bit to focus on community-based and nonprofit organizations. Fantastic. Well, that's the the title, Walk the Talk with Kim. Uh, And tell me a little bit about that title. What what were you thinking with that? I I mean, it's a catchy title. And of course, walk and talk rhyme, which is always a good thing. (laughs) The uh, alliteration with Kim also worked, sounded, we like the walk the talk with Kim. That's right. I like it too. Originally, we were going to call it Connect the Dots, Connecting the Dots with Kim. But I kept getting this Pee Wee Herman vision if you ever saw Pee Wee Herman in the morning about connecting the dots la 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 it um it's probably lost on a lot of people but every time <laughs> I, I heard connecting one. the dots I, I kept thinking of Pee Wee so I I, uh. I couldn't go with that one but um yeah walk the talk what we really were trying to look for in a uh, title was something that was a call to action for our community mm-hmm. to really understand why our nonprofits and community-based organizations are the lifeblood of our organ of our community and where we live, and why right. it's so important that we all have at least some connection to or pulse on the health and vitality of that community. And so Walk the Talk is a call to action for everyone Mm -hmm. um, to uh, pay some attention to what's going on in those communities and make sure that we're supporting them the best we can. So each week on the show, you focus on uh, a a different nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you prefer that title or that word over, say, the word charity? Uh, does it make a difference to you? Well, I hadn't even thought about I I don't think I've used the word charity mm-hmm. um, or thought about the word charity. Um, no, I mean, I think that nonprofits, people understand what that means. Mm-hmm. And nonprofit is also a bigger, and, and that's why I also add, and community organizations, right. because there are community organizations out there that are not nonprofit. Um, and it's not necessarily that they're for profit. They may be a loose association of individuals that have gotten mm-hmm. together for a common purpose or to explore an idea. Mm-hmm. And I did want to make sure we uh, we included those folks as well. Um, when you say nonprofit, there's a lot of nonprofits again that fall outside of the bailiwick of charity. So right. it's it's a bigger it's a bigger swath, I guess, okay. of organizations to focus on. And and why nonprofits? I mean, if you want to be profitable, um, it seems like focusing on nonprofits would be maybe uh, the wrong way to go. But uh, but but seriously, why why specifically nonprofits as your focus for the program? When you look at the ecosystem um, as it exists today uh, in human in humanity, mm-hmm. um, there are as many people that are operating in nonprofit organizations and community based organizations and government organizations in our school systems and our school districts. I mm. mean, hundreds of thousands of millions of people make up this infrastructure and ecostructure that supports, that supports big business and vice versa. All of us are working together in this fish tank and we have to make sure that all of the fish are healthy. You know, if the bumblebees mm. were to disappear off the planet, we would all right. die. Um, so why is it important to focus on a bumblebee and I think it's that same kind of concept when we look at nonprofits and uh, community-based organizations it's not only because you're torn by the plight of hunger Mm-hmm. or by um you know animals that don't have homes i mean all of those things when we look at it are critical and important for us on an emotional level to make sure that we're addressing um but you can also get overwhelmed by it because there is so much suffering that is happening out there but there's so much good that's happening out there right but even if you take all that emotionality out of it there it is um, imperative for people that are in corporations and business organizations to make sure that nonprofits are healthy because guess who's buying their services? <laughs> guess who's buying their product? Right. You know, AT and T. If all of the nonprofits were not profitable or all the nonprofits ceased to exist, AT and T would lose a lot of customers. Absolutely. You know? So it's important, yeah. I think, from an ecosystem perspective, that we look at it from a systematic perspective and take care of everybody as much as we can. 
but but is is something that you feel it's is part of your life's work to um, spotlight and to bring attention to? Because I know you were very successful in the business world mm-hmm. uh, before you started the radio show. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me a little bit about that that transition of of trying to bring attention to uh, nonprofits after being in a for profit company for company. so long. Yeah. And now, of course, you you've started your own company right. as well, uh, which is is your company nonprofit or my company is not nonprofit but um, that's only from state standards <laughs> if you ask my husband we are absolutely a nonprofit organization <laughs> <I see. laughs> that's how that kind of works but officially but, uh, paperwork officially, wise, no, you paperwork are wise uh, the, the the plan is to yes pay my bills and to Excellent. have more than macaroni and cheese Excellent. on my table but um, no it's not that bad I, I am actually very blessed with some wonderful cu- customers in both nonprofit for profit and and all points in between i've got some really great clientele so the question is is you know why the, yeah the question is why focus on the nonprofits, um or, or do you feel like that that's part of your your life's work uh now that you're no longer working in a, a for-profit organization yeah. on a daily basis you you talked about on your show mm-hmm. um for instance the you know how you got into radio and and how you focus on uh, non profits but i 'm just wondering is it is it part of an overall vision to kind of bring attention to these uh, folks that um, you know kind of work you know with a little fanfare and little attention but are doing good work out there? Do you feel mm-hmm. like that 's part of your mission in life i think um, great question and I think for me, what I recognized in myself is that I lived in my own little bubble mm hmm and my bubble consisted of me, my family, and my employees, and the profitability of the company. And that was pretty much it. And I began to really realize that the health of all of that really depended upon the school system. It depended mm-hmm. upon my husband getting a job, those kinds of things. But I also started to realize that it's not about me. It's really about we and it's and the more that I started to get engaged in looking into my community, I realized that my gift and my talent is I have a voice and I'm able to communicate to people and I'm able to inspire people and I'm able to lead people. Mm-hmm. And that's just something that I've always been able to do. Right. Um, and I felt that. Uh, there are some incredible people in the nonprofit arena that offer the same types of skills. So it just opened itself up to a bigger cause that use my talents and my skills for something that really helps the community and helps people feel better as opposed to schlepping phone equipment. Not that there's anything wrong with schlepping phone equipment. Sure. That is just <laughs> as important. But I've done that. I did that for 20 years it's time for someone who's young and and hungry and and wants to move up in that world and learn some incredible skills which i did i made some incredible friendships had some wonderful wonderful mentors that i'm still in contact with and i'm paying it forward now that's my um that's my lot in life right at the moment and that might change in another 10 years but for right now the paths have just opened up for me to uh, really give back into the community and um, I'm being rewarded in so many different ways. Well, I think it's great what you're doing because, uh, you. again, as I say, I I, do, I feel like there's a lot of folks out there that are doing hard work, not necessarily expecting any glory out of it. They they're just doing what they think is right, or maybe it's just a job for them, whatever. But overall, the work ends up being something very important to the community, as mm-hmm. you say. And I, I just think it's nice uh, for those people to get some attention here and there, and to you know, and and well, especially when they're trying to do fundraising uh, in yeah. these times. Which is can be very hard because it is very competitive for the dollars, whether it's for profit or, or non profit out there. Right. So I think anything we can do to kind of shine the light on some of the good work that's being done out there is a great thing. There's some incredible ideas that are out there right now. And there are some incredibly smart people that are operating in a vacuum because they are so focused on their mission and their passion and what they're doing. And if I can come in and say, look at what they're doing and look what that group is doing and look what that group is doing at those groups can communicate together or learn from each other, Mm -hmm. they might be able to create something
something that will help everybody. Yeah. And so that's kind of me. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. If I'm here able to connect people and to even have one listener out there say, hey, I've had an idea for so-and-so and there's a nonprofit that can really use that idea and that makes a connection, that's all I need. That's that's the reason and the purpose that I'm here. It all comes back to us all being connected right. again. Well, yeah. I'll tell you one thing I really enjoy about your show and uh, I'm lucky enough to uh, to work with you on your show is that it's actually very entertaining. You have a, a great sense of humor and I think that really comes across in the interviews because uh, you know, as I say, it is important to shine a light on, on nonprofits and what they're doing. But no, from, from uh, on paper, that could seem a little bit dry, you know, no offense. But on paper, <laughs> just when you say, oh, OK, nonprofits, that could yeah. seem a little dry. But you as a host really make it very accessible for the listener, I think, because you've got a great sense of humor. And, and the guests kind of sense that as well, that this isn't going to be a purely academic exercise. You know, you have fun on the show. And I think that really comes across. You're not afraid to talk about the weather or whatever is going on in your life you know what i mean um so it's not just like a lecture you know because you can get a lecture right. somewhere else you know this is uh this is a slice of life i think and i think that really comes across on your show and i i just want to give shine a light on that oh, if you will thank give you props to you for that oh thank you very much when i coach the executive directors before they come on board first of all they have to be dynamic and so i interview them up front um but when i coach them when they come on board i said it you know if you're just coming on to ask for money everybody's asking for money right. but i want to know about you because that's what's interesting to me so it's nice to know that um that's coming across on the radio because i'm trying to pull out of these folks their stories and executive directors or anybody working for nonprofit, they are the most humble people you'll ever meet. So getting them to talk about themselves is kind of difficult. So the fact that that comes through, you can feel that authenticity and you mm -hmm. can feel them being genuine and it inspires me. And I think I'm just thrilled that that's coming through over the radio. Well, I think it is definitely. And Thank I you. hope our listeners feel the same way and they can find out for themselves, of course, by tuning in every Wednesday at four o'clock here on Alternative Talk 1150. And you if you want to find out more about the show, you should definitely check out the website, Walk the Talk with Kim. That's Walk the Talk with Kim. It couldn't be more simple than that. Isn't that nice? That is very nice. Thank you. Thanks so much for being on the show today. We really appreciate it. And again, everybody, be sure to tune in every Wednesday at 4 here on Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Over 40 years ago, David Bowie's Major Tom lost communication with Earth while in space. Now, the European Space Agency may have found a way to keep fiction from ever becoming fact. This is Discovery Now with Jennifer Poli. Loss of communication between ground control and a fictional astronaut was highlighted in David Bowie's hit song, Space Oddity. The story wasn't real, but communication disturbances between Earth and Mars could be. Every 780 days, the two planets line up at opposite sides of the sun. This natural alignment is called a conjunction, and it would block any communication between astronauts on the red planet and mission control on Earth. A possible solution, recently presented by the ESA, suggests placing a pair of relay satellites in a B orbit, in full view of both Mars and Earth. Using ion thrusters to stay in place and counter the effects of gravity, the satellites would relay radio signals between the two planets, making communication through conjunction a reality and ensuring that Major Tom's story remains a fictional one. This is Jennifer Pulley for Discovery Now. Discovery Now is written and produced by the National Institute of Aerospace. Funding for Discovery Now provided by a grant from the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Visit Discovery Now on the web at discoverynow.us. And 
again. Hello once again. Eric Ryder here with you. As part of Alternative Talk Talk, we present another edition of the Galaxy of the Stars interview. And our big star today on the show <laughs> is Vicki St. Clair from Conversations Live with Vicki St. Clair. For those of you that don't know, this is a little segment that we like to do to introduce you to some of our very favorite programs here on the station. Uh, one of the broadcast highlights uh, of my week each week is getting to work with Vicki St. Clair uh, and uh, doing the Conversations Live with Vicki St. Clair program, which airs Mondays at noon here on Alternative Talk 1150. Good afternoon, Vicki. Or I, let me just say good day, because who knows when this is happening. <laughs> so, so. Well, good day to you, Eric. I, I'll pay you for that very nice introduction later, okay? Uh, Thank you. I look forward to that. <laughs> Buy some chips. Or crisps, as you say, a in crisps, your country. Crisps, as we say in my country. Yeah, mm. and uh, we've, we've alluded to a little bit of fact, and it's perfectly obvious anytime you say hello or anything on the air that you do originally hail from uh, Great Britain. I do. And whereabouts in, in the UK are you originally from? I came from Birmingham, which is the central point of, uh, it's pretty central. It's called the Midlands. It's an area called Midlands. It's about mm. 110 miles north north of London. Uh, you told me you were from Birmingham before, and I always just assumed Alabama, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Birmingham, England, yeah. Well, if I had a Birmingham accent, uh, Birmingham, England <laughs> accent, right. you might not be able to understand me, so... <laughs> really? Well, well, you have a great voice, great personality, and, and people enjoy your program every week, and uh, we, we do have a, a lot of feedback from our listeners that they enjoy the show, so that's going to make you feel pretty good. It does. I, I love doing the show. So, um, you know, any any feedback is always good because we I seriously do want to, you know, bring what people want to hear. So for listeners that haven't heard the show, how would you describe the program? I basically interview a lot of authors, not always authors, and mm -hmm. not just because they've written a book. I seriously look for people who are experts in their business. Now, now that might be, they might be medical professionals, they might be business leaders. Um, we've spoken with environmental leaders. We've spoken with um, fiction authors. I've spoken with film uh, writers. So all kinds of people, but people that I think have an interesting story to share. Okay. And this is, this is the toughest question, I think, that I ask, uh, is do you have a favorite interview that you've done? And, and people don't want to say what their favorite was because they don't want to offend any of the thousands of guests that they've had on their show. But uh, so I like to phrase it as do you have one that stands out in your mind as being one that you really enjoyed doing? Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I'm not saying this because I don't want to offend anybody, but right. I, I, I don't think I really do. I enjoy a lot of our guests because I personally am interested in, in a really wide range of subjects. Mm -hmm. But I try and like, you know, when when you go off air because you're so caught up in the in the moment when you're on air, you can't tell if a show is going well or not. Right. I, I like to laugh if it's appropriate, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel if we've we've laughed and lifted someone or we've shared good information with someone or, you know, shone a light where, you know, people didn't know about a particular subject. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good show. And any. Any show that's a good show by those uh, standards, I've enjoyed. Very good. Very I enjoy good. all of them. That's so PC of you. <laughs> no, no, really, it's not. Honestly, it's really not. All right. Well, I could ask you the flip side of that, which was there anybody that you just thought, oh, that's... You don't even have to name names. Why, well, I did. There... Well, do you remember we had somebody who was supposed to call in and they wouldn't give us their number because they were traveling? And, yeah. But we, we have this little rule that it has to, they have to phone in on a landline. She right. called in late on a cell phone and mm -hmm. kept dropping. Yeah. I'm not going to mention names, but this person works in TV production and should have known <laughs> should better. Should have known better. <laughs> exactly. That day I felt like giving up, but... Um, <laughs> Well, I'm glad you did it because, uh, you know, it, it, that's the thing with live radio. You face uh, challenges, you know, things come up like that. But we always work around it. The show must go on, as it will. Right, right. Uh, as it is. And uh, and the show went on, and it was a good show. And uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's important to point out, that not everything is always going to go according to plan, whether it's in life or on the show, but uh, making the best of it, making the most.
most of it is very important. I think that's something that you do each week on the show. I try to. I try to. Somebody asked me once, is, is your show like uh, Terry Gross? And fresh air. Uh, for fresh air on NPR. Very popular program. Right. Yeah. And I said, well, not really, because... You know, Terry does a great show. Yeah. Uh, I think she has six producers working on it mm -hmm. and something like seven editors working on it. Yeah. And all of the shows are pre recorded. Right. So, you know, um, a very big difference in production and, and how things might turn out. We're walking a high wire with your program because it is <laughs> Conversations Live. It's Conversations Live. We do occasionally incorporate a recorded interview, but even those are pretty much just live to digital bits, I guess. We, we, right. we would have said live to tape in the old days, but we're in the, the right. 90s now. So. No, we still do it live. Um, yeah. The only reason we pre-record is if I have schedule to... Schedule conflicts. Schedule yeah. conflicts or if I'm on assignment. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Well, I, I want to thank you very much for being here with us, and uh, I really do enjoy your program. It is a highlight of my week working with you, and uh, mm -hmm. and it's uh, definitely a real pleasure. So thanks again uh, for joining us here on the Galaxy of the Stars. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to work with you, too. Thank you so much. And I definitely recommend that people tune in every Monday at noon here on Alternative Talk, 1150 a.m. for Conversations Live with Vicki St. Clair. Rounding second is Brown. He's going to try and dig for three. The relay on the way. Not in time. A slide in triple for Caleb Brown. Another slider. That's it out of short. Might be two. Ben Trot underhands to Jerry. Relay to first is in time. Here's the one two on the way. Swing and a miss. He blew him down. 91 miles an hour. And Erickson has his fourth strikeout of the afternoon. This is Huskies Baseball on the Washington Sports Network from IMG College. Brought to you by Alaska Airlines and Horizon Air. For the lowest fares guaranteed, visit alaskaair.com. The ball is Tomasini. He'll look up and this one is off the scoreboard in left center field. A two-run home run by Conley. And the Huskies jump on the Ducks here in the sixth. Now, Huskies Baseball. Well, good afternoon again. It is game two of a doubleheader and game three, the final game of a weekend series between the Washington Huskies and the Oregon State Beavers. Steve Sandmeyer and Gary Hill at Husky Ballpark, a doubleheader today. The capper coming in the form of a couple of freshmen going against one another. The right-hander Austin Voth for the Huskies. And then a southpaw by the name of Ben Wetzler out of Clackamas, Oregon. Uh, Left-hander at 6'1", 195 pounds going for the Beavers. And Gary, if you're the Huskies, after losing the first two games last night in the game at Safeco Field 6-4 to four, and game one of today's doubleheader, 9-3, to three, boy, it would be sure nice to get out to a good start. That's just something that uh, I think is evident and apparent in a game three situation and no more so than against a team like Oregon State, that by virtue of a 9-3 to win in relative easy fashion, they've got their bullpen set up for this third and final game. And if the Huskies get out to a slow start, it might be another long game for the Dogs, who are trying to salvage one of these three against Oregon State. And it is possible. They've shown some signs in this series. Uh, we saw in the last game uh, just a few moments ago as they were able to hit the baseball. They put together some hits. They just couldn't. Get the big hits. Twelve hits in the ball game. We saw a couple innings last night, uh, putting some runs on the board. Three in the fourth inning, one in the third. Again, hitting the ball. So we're seeing some signs of life offensively. And I think, I think you're absolutely right. Getting off to a nice start, putting some runs on the board early on the game that would certainly help the cause. Austin Voth again. We mentioned the freshman getting the start. He's two and four on the year with an ERA of 4.92. And Ben Wetzler six and two for the Beavers with an ERA of 3.76. Take a brief time out. We'll come back with more pregame of the third and final game of this weekend series and the second and final game of today's doubleheader. When we return to Husky Ballpark in a moment, you're listening to Husky Baseball on IMG College. Pioneer Radio and Sports would like to thank the following businesses who are committed to customer service. Today's Huskies broadcast is brought to you in part by James G. Murphy Company. See them on the web at murphyauction.com by MCR Roofing. Bad roof? No more. By Emerald Cove Catering Company. Turn off the stove and call the cove. 
by Clean Crawls, excellence in serving people, and by Cedar Ridge Materials Incorporated, spreading rock one driveway at a time. A lot of players on the east side head to the UW to play for the Huskies. A lot of Husky fans on the east side head to Eastside Automotive and Tire for all their auto needs. Why? Because like the Huskies, Eastside Automotive strives to be a champion. Visit them at 12676 Northeast 85th in Kirkland or online at eastsideautomotive.com. Eastside Automotive and Tire, whether it's automotive repairs, maintenance, or quality brand name tires, you deserve to work with a champion. Building a contending team means recruiting the best possible players and coaches. It's the same when it comes to construction work. If site work is part of your next industrial or commercial building project, the team to call is Anthony Construction Company. They're experts in all phases of industrial and commercial construction, including utilities, underground wire, and cable. Serving the area since 1987, Anthony Construction Company is your go-to team in construction and they're proud sponsors of your Huskies. To win a championship, a team relies on their veteran players. Their experience makes all the difference. At Artisan Electric Incorporated, their experience makes them the chance to see for all of your solar electric needs. Artisan Electric's team consists of professionally trained and licensed electricians. With 30 years of experience, Artisan Electric has the background, knowledge, and training to provide quality solar electric installation for the Puget Sound area. For information, call 206-463-3111 or go to artisanelectric.com. Welcome back to game number two of this doubleheader this afternoon. Steve Sandmeyer, Gary Hill, as the Oregon State Beavers try to sweep away the Huskies, and obviously Austin Voth, the freshman right-hander, will have something to say about that. Austin Voth getting the nod here in game two of the doubleheader. He'll face a lineup consisting of Ryan Dunn leading off and playing short. It'll be Ryan Barnes, the left fielder, batting second. Danny Hayes, the first baseman, hitting third. Kevin Kyes will be the second baseman hitting cleanup. D.H. Andrew Susak batting fifth. Jared Norris, the right fielder, hitting sixth. Then it's Carter Bell, the third baseman, batting seventh. Parker Berber at the catcher, hitting eighth. And Brian Stamps, the center fielder, batting ninth. The first pitch on the way to Dunn. The leadoff hitter by both, missing for ball one. Oregon State taking the first two. Six to four last night at Safeco Field. And nine to three in the game earlier today. Both ready to go into the wide. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's at the letters. Strike one called. One ball and one strike the count. Defensively, Sparks in center, Megs in left. Chase Anselman in right in the outfield for the Huskies. Ryan Wiggins behind the plate here for the second game of this doubleheader. Here's the 1-1, and that's fouled it up and out of play. And then around the infield, Scott at first. Jones at second, Afner at short, and Lamb over at third, right to left defensively. Let's play two. We're underway here in game two in the top of the first. Here's the wind and the one-two pitch on the way by both. Breaking ball, cut on, backhand dive, knocking it down is Lamb, but that's all I can get. That'll be an infield single for Dunn as Lamb valiantly diving to his left, able to knock the ball down, but unable to come up with it and throw out Dunn, who was hustling up the line. So an infield single for Ryan Dunn to start things out here in the top of the first in game two, the capper of this twin bill on a Saturday afternoon. Well, you talked about Huskies getting off to a good start, and here's Oregon State, already a first base runner right off the bat. Huskies will draw the infield in, certainly looking for a double play here. Here's Ryan Barnes, the left fielder. Barnes in game one of this doubleheader went one for five. This one's chopped to third, and a beautiful diving catch made by Lamb on the attempt. And there's one down. Nicely done by Lamb coming down the line. He's already been active in the first two batters of the game. On a bunt attempt that was popped up halfway between third and home. And Lamb coming down the line on a popped up bunt attempt. Just got a little too much air under the bunt attempt. But Lamb, he really pounced on that quickly, expecting a bunt. And a great play. Great diving play by Lamb. Here's Danny Hayes, the third hitter in the Oregon State order. First pitch change up by both in and over for strike one. Good pitch. Watch Hayes closely to see how he's running. He got hit by a pitch in game one and got lifted immediately for a pinch hitter, pinch runner, rather. 
One on, one out for the Beavers. Top of the first, just underway here in game two. Huskies trying to salvage one of these three, a turn and a throw to first, and Scott has to climb a ladder just to get it. Back to the bag easily is done. Scott, already tall, climbing a ladder. He really had to go high <laughs> and get that baseball. 0-1 oh the count. And here's the pitch on the way, and that's a breaking ball in the inside corner. Nicely done, strike two. I always tend to think that strike zones, for some reason, tend to be a little bigger in game two of a doubleheader. Now, why would that be? Just something I've noticed through the years, so it's something hitters should be aware of. Ryan Blyberg, the home plate umpire. Billy Hayes over at first. Kenneth Durham, the third base umpire here in the second game of this doubleheader. The 0-2 gets past Wiggins and over his head. That'll be a wild pitch. As down to second on the play goes Dunn. Wiggins barely able to get his catcher's mitt on that on a pitch that sailed over his head all the way to the backstop and both not happy with himself. In fact, going to get a new baseball. A ball and two strikes, but the wild pitch puts Dunn in position here in the top half of the first. Well, with the count of two, he tried to elevate a fastball to see if he'd climb the ladder with him and uh, elevated a little too much. So a ball and two strikes on Hayes. Hayes again, as you heard Gary mention, lifted after being hit by a pitch. Pitch on the way, cut on and hit foul up and out of play over the third base side. Not nearly the crowd in game two as we had in game one, but uh, that's a tall order having the little, little leaguers stay there for two straight games in a row. One and two the count, one down. Beavers with a runner on second. Huskies and Austin Voth, the youngster on the mound from the right side, the stretch. And the one two. And that one's lifted to center field and deep. Back on the ball is Sparks. He will turn his back, look up, and it's gone. And Oregon State picking right up where they left off in game one when they hit four home runs in the first game today. Have another one here. A two-run shot in the top of the first. And it's Oregon State two and Washington nothing. And Hayes appeared to be okay rounding the bases there. He didn't appear to be affected at all <laughs> by getting hit by a pitch. As he really got into that pitch. Oh. Dead center field. What's, what, what is this? Oregon State playing long ball. They came into today with four home runs as a team in Pac-10 play. They've hit five today. Here's Voth, the pitch on the way to the cleanup hitter, Kais, and it's cut on and fouled back. Owen won the count. That is all you need to know. Well, you see a charge like that, you wonder how he only has three. I mean, he really hammered that. Two to nothing, Beavers already here with one down at the top of the first. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's ripped into right field for a base hit. So Oregon State not going anywhere. They're going to bring their bats out with them. It's apparent already here in the third and final game of this series and the second game of the ball game today. Andrew Susak. Speaking of being able to hit, here's Andrew Susak. He's a designated hitter. He caught game one of this doubleheader. He'll be the DH and bat fifth in game two. Susak with one of the four Beaver home runs in the game earlier. A two-run shot. Out, one out, a runner on first. Already two to nothing Beavers here in the top of the first. Both a turn and a throw to first. So your key to the game is already kind of well flown out the window here in the first inning. I better hurry up and come up with some more keys real quick. <laughs> Oregon State scored four in the top half of the first earlier today in game one. Here's the pitch. Slider breaking ball in the outside corner. Owen won the count. Oregon State's a really tough team to fall behind. I mean, they're the kind of team that I mean, every team plays better ahead, but it's the kind of team that is really good when they're playing ahead. Susak's numbers on the year. A 362 average, five home runs, 29 runs batted in as the 0-1 pitch sails up and in for ball one. And that's all with just 94 at-bats. Look at that, 34 of 94 with five home runs, 29 batted in. He is a 628 slugger. Andrew Susak. One and one the count. Runner on first is Kais. Both 
trying to limit the damage to just the two runs off the homer from Danny Hayes. Here's the stretch and the pitch on the way, and that one's a fastball low. Two and one the count. His first game was the 10th of this month, just a few days ago. First time he'd played since April 3rd with the hamate injury. And he was just mashing the ball before that. I mean, just crushing it. Two and one the count. A two to nothing Oregon State lead here in the first. The stretch by both. And a right-hander turns and throws to the bag and diving back to the bag is Kai's. Both no decision despite a solid start against Stanford six days ago. Six innings. Six hits. No earned runs. One walk, three strikeouts. Also got a no decision in a brief start the 1st of May in Pullman at Washington State. Went two innings, allowed two earned runs. Got the win against USC here at Husky Ballpark back on April 23rd as the pitch is in and over for a called strike two. Two and two the count on Susak with one down here in the top of the first. Yeah, and that start that you were just talking about certainly is best of the year against USC. He was really good in that ball game. Seven innings, just giving up one run. Two and two the count. Both ready to go. The stretch and the pitch on the way is hit foul straight back up behind us to our right. Just Mr. Carr. Always that excitement here at Husky Ballpark when you foul a ball out of play behind the home plate area. Chance to make an insurance claim. <laughs> You're an automobile driver in the vicinity. Two and two the count. Susak ready to go from the right side. So is Voth. Here's the stretch by Austin. Long hesitation and the 2-2 on the way. Swinging a ground ball foul up the line at first and down toward the corner in foul territory. So we will re-rack and break again with a two-ball, two-strike count. One out just underway. Top of the first. Oregon State in front, two to nothing. A two-run home run by Danny Hayes doing the damage to dead center field as the Beavers, and that statistics says it all, came into today with four home runs in their entire Pac-10 season so far. They have now hit five today, four in game one and one here in game two. Here's the 2-2. Check swing taken upstairs, and the count goes full. Three balls, two strikes. Both the freshmen out of Kentwood High School. Former conqueror. Trying to conquer the Beavers here. And that's a tall task, no doubt. Already in front two to nothing with one down here. Full count. Runner goes. Pitch on the way. Strike three. Call throw down to second base. And it is in time. Strike him out. Throw him out. Double play. As Susak goes down looking, and Kais is gunned down trying to steal second. But the damage done, a two-run home run by Danny Hayes. Nobody left after the strike him out, throw him out, double play. And we are underway in game two of this doubleheader. After a half frame in game two, it's the Beavers two, the Huskies coming up. Lewis, I was surfing the web, comparing other airlines' rates to Horizon Air and Alaska Airlines. Really, Clark, and you're the one who always said... I know, it's not about the money, I know. You always said that Alaska and Horizon are our airlines, from right here in the Northwest, and we take care of our own. I realize that, Lewis, but I got Clark, you always said that the three C's matter most. Convenience, comfort, and quality. I know. I'm just trying to say that the prices at AlaskaAir.com are really low. But you're right, it's not about the money. On the Clark and Lewis expedition, it wasn't about making $40 a month. $40? I was paid $30 a month. And worth every penny. But... You were like a Horizon or Alaska fare at AlaskaAir.com. A tremendous value that America couldn't find anywhere else. Yeah, but... But I... it's not about the money, I know. Yeah, but I... Look, refills. Ooh. Buy the low fares and great deals on cars, hotels, vacation packages, and more. All in one easy place at alaskaair.com. Behind the plate, Parker Berberet on the mound with a record of 6 and 2, Southpaw, number 28, Ben Wetzler. Welcome back to Husky Ballpark. We go to the bottom of the first. Ben Wetzler, a left hander, 
for the Beavers going up against the Husky lineup. It will be Will Sparks to lead things off in center field. It will be followed by Joe Meggs, the left fielder. Third baseman Jacob Lamb coming off a four for five game in game one will play third and hit third. Troy Scott, the first baseman, will back clean up for the Huskies here in game two. Batting fifth will be the DH BK Santee. Batting sixth, catcher Ryan Wiggins. Chase Anselman will hit seventh at play and right, followed by shortstop Ty After batting eighth. And Reggie Jones, the second baseman, batting ninth. Huskies trail at two to nothing as we go to the bottom of the first. Sparks to stand in. Center fielder Will Sparks. Sparks only 21 at bats on the year. He is five of 21 for a 2.38 average. No home runs, three batted in, and a chance in Pac-10 play to get her done here against the Oregon State Beavers, who have taken the first two of this three-game set. First pitch on the way by Wetzler. The fastball a little bit upstairs. Ball one. Wetzler, 6-2 with an ERA of 3.76 in 55 innings. Has allowed 51 hits. Has only walked 16 and has struck out 41. Opponents hitting 243 off Wetzler. Here's the 1-0. That's fouled straight back against the screen. Count goes to a ball and a strike. It's a hard tie to get a read on. Pitching on Sundays in his starts, anyways, because the way their starting pitching has been on Fridays and Saturdays, they've had such a deep bullpen. He's been yanked pretty early in a lot of his starts. Breaking ball, cut on and lined into left field for a base hit. Nice piece of hitting by Will Sparks. And the Huskies have the leadoff man on here in the bottom of the first. Little breaking ball, Sparks stayed on it, smoked it into left, in between short and third. He is coming off his career high, tied his career high, seven innings against Cal. Just four hits, allowing just one run, no walks, and seven punch outs. Really in a groove against the Golden Bears. So the Huskies have the leadoff man on. They'll bring the tying run to the plate here in the bottom of the first. It's left fielder Joe Meggs. That wind continues to kick up. First pitch on the way is hit foul up and out of play over the first base stands. 